Hi, Sabrina, can I start? Yes, Nancy, we're live on YouTube. You can start. Thank you. Good afternoon. Due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment public hearings are being conducted electronically via WebEx webinar, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who registered in advance will be connecting to the hearing using a phone or compatible electronic device and are able to make their presentations to committee using WebEx webinar. Participants will be muted automatically upon entry, and when your item is called, participants will be unmuted one person at a time by the moderator. Please mute your devices until called upon to speak. Today, Committee of Adjustment is offering attendees the option to appear by video. Attendees who registered in advance to attend by video will be temporarily upgraded to panelists when their item is called. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be visible during your five minute allotted speaking time and at all other times your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will assist us by moderating the WebEx webinar platform, including sharing presentation material received within the written submission deadline. Members of the public and applicants are not allowed to use the share screen function or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. My name is Nancy Oman and I will be chairing this hearing. Panel members participating via WebEx webinar who can be seen and heard are Larry Clay, Joanne Hayes, Yim Chan and Peter Reed. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and it is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment for the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to the property, permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone attending today who wants to receive a copy of the committee's decision for an application must submit a written request by email to the general email address for the Committee of Adjustment, Toronto and East York District Office. Please include your name, address and an email address. Committee of Adjustment and T-Lab notifications and appeal updates will be sent by email only. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body known as T-Lab or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Appeal instructions will be set out at the bottom of the committee's decision. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation if desired. When the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee, and I'll comment when you're reaching the five minute mark. When addressing the committee, please speak slowly and clearly state your name and address. Please confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first with the presentation of the application and then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have completed their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent will be unmuted and will have an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of the discussion and the application will be taken into committee for a decision. When a presentation is not required, panel members may ask questions and or take the matter into committee for a decision. Please note, the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice are informed of the changes. Um, panel members and staff, are there any declarations of interest uh, this afternoon? No. Through you, Madam Chair, see none. 
Okay. Uh, Madam Deputy Secretary Treasurer, are you aware of any requests to close or defer files this afternoon? Through you, Madam Chair, see none for today. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, the next item then, or our first item this afternoon, is 2143 Regal Road. Committee has before it copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have 16 photographs of the subject property, eight photographs of comparable properties in the area, covering letter from the agent, presentation materials from the agent. We have support from number 45 and 41, both adjacent properties, as well as 845 St. Clair Avenue. We have correspondence expressing a concern from number 41. Actually, um, we did get in our late materials, 41 revoked the support that they had given. And um, I show one speaker. Do we have the opposition speaker staff? Yes, we do. Okay, can we I have the have inter John Edward Glenn on the line currently, but we do have Linda Lemberg. Okay, so hang on, let me just flip to my second page. Okay, so... Oh, it looks like we do have him on the line. I, I you apologize. Do? Okay. Yes, we, we have both okay. of them. Great, thanks. So I'll go to the, um, the agent then, and um, if you've got him, that'd be great. Yep, Mr. Giacomini, you're, you're yeah. muted. Yeah. Well, the reason um, that I didn't want to move uh, that wall is because of the uh, tree that they had there. Um, um, just, uh, I'm sorry, before you start, can sure. you just, uh, I just need you to identify yourself for the record, yeah. and then I'm going to ask you actually to do a presentation because there's two opposition speakers, and sure. it's no more than five minutes. Sure. Okay. My name is Egidio Giacomini, and I'm the agent for Mr. and Mrs., uh, 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 for James Hassel and uh, Ann Hassel, um, and uh, I was asked to design this, uh, and um should I go through these zoning? Well, it's it's up to you. I mean, I I think it it it's instead of reading out the variances, I I would think an explanation of why you need them is more appropriate. Okay. Well, first of all, number two, the soft landscaping. I mean, uh, basically, um, uh, the landscaping is not going to change. Uh, it's going to be the same as it is the soft landscaping. I'm taking away some of the hard landscaping because um, I'm going to reduce it and I'm also adding to the existing garage about a meter uh, to the west of it and as opposed to number three most of the building is going to be remaining uh, so basically what I wanted to do is have the same garage footprint but just add a little bit on uh, about a meter uh, to the uh, west of it number four uh, there are several laneway suites uh, as I provided uh, uh, for you, uh, number 94 and 96 Helena, that have uh, pretty much um, zero lot lines. Uh, number five uh, is, we're only talking about 0 0.08 of a meter. Uh, number six, 5.65 uh, meter setback, that's from the bump out. Uh, and uh, But if you look at the main rear wall, you're another three meters uh, uh, behind that. Uh, number seven, uh, other suites as per picks uh, don't have any kind of slope. They're they're pretty much square with a a um, a, a flat roof. And number eight uh, is uh, uh, just minor, eight point three two meters. The height, uh, I just wanted to keep um, a parapet wall uh, on the top of the uh, the existing flat roof just for drainage. I could take that down a bit if required okay okay so um i will have the, both of the speakers um come up next and then you'll be back to address the concerns that they raise sure. for another you'll have another five minutes and then if members have questions we'll ask you at that point sure. okay thank you okay um linda lemberg are you there She is unmuted. Hi, Linda, are you there? Yes, I am here. Good Hi, Linda, I just need you to identify yourself, your name and address for the record, and after you've done that, you have five minutes to Thank speak. Thank you very much. My name is Linda Lemberg. 
and I live at 41 Regal Road. I'm the owner, and it's the property adjacent to the east of 43 Regal. Is that enough? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so, great. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right. And you can tell me when to begin, right? Yeah, go ahead. I just ask a question before I'm clocked. Um, will you be showing the um, photos uh, for the three objections? Um, is it something you sent in that you want us yes, to bring I up? did, and I was told they would be on the screen as I'm Yeah, talking. well, we all staff is going to find them now. I think okay, they're... I'll, I'll wait until you signal that I should speak. Is that it to start there? No, that's the next door. That's uh, De Gio uh, Mr. Uh, Giacomini's photos. That's not ours. Um, okay, I'm just... There are three sets of them. Chair, they're attached to the letter of concern. Yeah, I'm just uh, looking yeah, in the SUP, right? Or no? Or in the letter of the... Uh, okay. There are three files. That's it. That's okay, them. there you go. All right, so we'll start the clock now then. Okay, thank you very much. Um, with the house, when the house was invited me to their garage last May to discuss the laneway suite, Anne reassured me that it would not affect our service berry tree, would not shadow our pollinator garden, and would not have north-facing windows to respect our privacy. None of these commitments have been honored, has been honored, as I outlined in my written submission. Our service berry tree has a diameter of 68 centimeters at its base. Its branches arch over the Hassel's garage. It attracts migratory songbirds, such as cedar waxwing and hermit thrush. We object to variance requests 3, 4, and 8, which endanger our tree. We ask that the construction be built clear of the tree's branches as promised and protective of its root structure. The tree declaration made by their architect, Mr. Giacomini, is false. He answered negative to question one on the form, even though our service berry meets the protected tree criteria. His correspondence dated August the 8th is deceptive. The photos of the exterior property exclude our tree, but include a photo of an oak tree far from the site. This proje project is in violation of the tree bylaw. We therefore request a tree report. We further object to number eight because the height would shadow more than half of our garden, transforming a diverse ecosystem in which we have invested thousands of dollars into a full shade environment inhospitable to most plant life. Therefore, we request a shadowing report. The proposed height and north facing second story windows encroach on our privacy inside our house and outside. The plan is a case of overbuilding. Why are there two bedrooms for a one person suite? Why is there a two car garage when the hassles only have one? Reallocating space to accommodate one car would allow for more living space on the ground floor. An L shaped one story suite or a one and a half story home would be in keeping with the trend of smaller condominium and apartment units. The proposal is not a suite. It is an intrusive two story, two car garage structure whose height reaches our second floor east trough and whose total square footage is over 1200 square feet. This is a disproportionately large building which will loom over our home and the laneway. The photos of laneway houses the architect submitted on October 26th as comparable bear no semblance to our situation. Jeffrey visited each site. They are not escarpment homes and except for Helena Avenue, they do not encroach on gardens or privacy. Please note that the architect's documents contain inaccuracies and contradictions such as dimensions and number of cars accommodated we request further scrutiny. Unfortunately, Linda and Nick DiGiorgio at 33 Rugal are unable to attend today to support our objections. We do have the support of our neighbors at 37 and 39 as well. We consider this proposal a dangerous precedent, precedent for overbuilding, opening the door to the diminishment of the urban forest, reduction of biodiversity, and obstruction of our unique view of the city, thereby lowering property value. It does not balance the need for affordable housing with the exigencies of environmental protection. In fact, the proposed construction is antithetical to City Council's Climate Action Plan, Transform TO, adopted last December with the goal to reduce community-wide greenhouse gas emissions in Toronto to net zero by 2040. The project would negatively impact our quality of life. Jeffrey has battled cancer for two decades. I have been ill for 13 years. Our garden is our sanctuary, our primary source of solace and joy, integral to our mental health. 
especially as we navigate the terrain of chronic illness during the ongoing pandemic. We support Laneway Suites in principle and specifically the Hassel's intent to build one for their special needs daughter. We recognize the need for housing as well as the urgency to mitigate climate change. The housing crisis and climate emergency require mindful, balanced planning. We are asking for a thoughtful plan that reflects these personal, community and global issues. As it stands, the scale of this proposal is unconscionable. I appreciate the opportunity to address you all today. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Panel members, do you have any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, thank you, Ms. Lemberg. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have the next speaker? Yes, the next speaker is Ted Glenn. He is unmuted. Hello. Hi. Um, can you state your name and address for the record? And then you have five minutes to address the committee. Thank you. My name is John Edward Glenn. I go by Ted, a nickname. Um, I'm at 37 Regal Road, so three houses away from 43. In general, I support Laneway Suites, uh, and I think they're an incredibly useful tool uh, that the city has uh, to increase housing capacity in the city. And I support them as long as they are considered of the neighborhood in terms of scale, in terms of proportion, and in terms of design. And I think that's exactly what the bylaws are intended to do and um, have always been in support of those since they came in. And, and I think if you look at the project directly across the laneway that you're reviewing today as well at 1254 Davenport, it's exactly what a laneway suite should be trying to do. Uh, but I do not support the variance uh, requests here. They are not minor, particularly around height. That is not a minor uh, variance going from 4 meters to 6.22 meters. I think that the plans overall are out of keeping with the character of the laneway specifically and the character of the neighborhood on uh, re this part of Regal Road. And I think given the, the, the scope of what's being requested, they warrant some other kind of uh, review process as opposed to a uh, bylaw variance. The specific impact of this variance on, uh, on my home is around height. Again, uh, going from four meters to 6.55 meters, a 2.55 meter increase. That would block the, our late afternoon sun and our sunset. Um, we built our addition on our house uh, with specific uh, windows designed to capture that light, particularly in the wintertime. Uh, we have windows on our south and our west side that captured on both the first and the second floor. If the variance was approved, we would lose all of that light and we would lose all that investment. It would also impact on our southern view. We, we paid a premium to live on the escarpment of the ancient Iroquois um, uh, lakefront, I guess. Uh, and, you know, in the future, would expect to get that back. If the variance is approved, that's going to cut into uh, to that, our ability to do that. So again, I'm in support of Langway Housing, and, and I think uh, if you look at the existing envelope of the garage that's on that property, um, I would not have any problem supporting the development of a Langway suite there. The height is right now is exactly four meters. Uh, and keeping to that envelope would not cast any additional shadow and wouldn't impact us in any way. But that that increase that's being asked for, uh, over a fifty over a, a fifty percent increase, is beyond a minor variance in my opinion, and would significantly impact the enjoyment of our uh, our property. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Giacomini. instead of 6.55 to 6.10, that's about 20 feet. There are other uh, uh, similar uh, uh, building heights that are around 20 feet high. So, uh, I mean, I could do that. Um, I'm sorry, I are you making an amendment uh, to the variances? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah. Okay, so what exactly, and, and also before you do that, did I read that you're actually providing the bicycle spaces? So are yes, you? Yes, I am. Yeah. So are I'm you providing the bicycle? Them? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay, providing. So, the bicycle. so you have the notice in front of you. Are you eliminating variance number nine then, for the bicycle parking spaces? Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay, and then just give me a second. 
Um, what what else are you changing here? And and please. I'm changing the height from six point five five to six point one zero. Hey, can you give feet. me the variance number, please? That you're. I think that's number nine. I believe. No, you're. Are you looking at the zoning notice or the one that was? I need you to look at the one that was mailed out to people. Um, the committee's notice. Number eight, chair. So I've, eight. I've got number nine on my uh, zoning bylaw notice. That's what I. Got. Okay, so number eight, the and the altered ancillary building containing a laneway suite will have a height of what did you say you're making it? Six point one zero. From six five five, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so six point one zero. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you're changing? Uh, no. No. Okay, so can you speak then now? Um, you have five minutes to speak to the issues raised by the uh, two neighbors that just spoke. Yeah, I mean, if I move that wall um, that's facing the Limburgs, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy that tree. Now, I've had an arborist look at that tree, uh, uh, L. Miley, and he says it does not conform. So I'm not uh, trying to, uh, you know, the situation is it's not it's less than 30 centimeters and that's how it was measured by my arborist okay so uh when i filled out the form that's what i did i said it was under 30 centimeters and that the zoning bylaw would not apply to it and the reason why i want to keep that is because i don't want to disrupt their garden so by keeping that wall i'm 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 uh, not disrupting the uh, service berry and that's the reason why i was keeping that wall I mean, I could speak. Uh, I mean, I could, if they, if if required. I mean, I could alter my drawings um, uh, and, and meet with the neighbors if they have other concerns. I could okay, do if, that. Uh, okay. Before we go any further, then, if that's something you're willing to do, then I yeah. I would suggest we defer the application. Like we can't yeah. be doing that on the floor here. Sure. So if that's okay with them. Yeah. Like I need, I need to. Uh, the hassles need to get this done for their daughter who has special needs, and uh, and uh, I mean I could meet with the neighbors and address their concerns and maybe uh, redesign uh, things to sort of uh, appease uh, their concerns. So I mean I could do that. I could defer it. Okay, I'm willing so to do that. Are you requesting a deferral then? Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay, and you do understand that, you know, it's up to three months to get back on an agenda, right? That's correct. Okay. All right, panel members, uh, let's take it into committee then regarding a deferral of this application so that the applicant can address concerns with the neighbors. Ms. Chan. Um, oh. I, I, I agree to a deferral since that the applicant uh, is willing to make some changes. I think just give him a chance to work with the next door neighbor. Maybe we'll come up with a better design. Uh, so I will move for uh, deferral for the curious reasons. Okay. Do I have a seconder for that motion, Mr. Reed? Okay. So the motion is to defer the application to give the applicant a chance to address concerns um, that the neighbors have and um, to meet with the neighbors and uh, to get back on the first available agenda when he's um, made revisions or anything else he chooses to do with the application. So that's moved by Ms. Chan, seconded by Mr. Reed. All in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you, sir. Okay, the next item, item 22 is 85 Chiltern Hill Road. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Um, we have an FSI committee of adjustment approvals affecting the properties at a number of properties on Chiltern Hill, Croydon Road, Ava Road, Warwick Road, Strathern, Glen Cedar, Dewborn, and Peveril Hill North. Uh, side yard setback approvals uh, for properties that on Chiltern Hill, Ava Road, Strathern, uh, Dewborn, and Peveril Hill North. We have uh, email correspondence from transportation. They did not express any concerns. 
we have uh, support from numbers 87 and 83, which are both adjacent properties. And uh, I don't show any opposition speakers. Do we have the agent on the line? Yes, we do. And they're unmuted. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? Can you identify yourself for the record, please? Yes, my name is Nilufar Soltani from KH Davis Engineering, and I'm the agent for the owners of 85 Chiltern Hills. Okay, thank you. Uh, panel members, uh, we have, I believe, four variances before us. Uh, do you have any questions for the agent? Uh, Ms. Soltani, I'm not showing uh, the members having any questions. We're ready to make a decision on this. Anything you want to add before we go into committee? No, sounds good to me. Okay, thanks. All right, panel members, we are in committee. Mr. Clay. Yeah, sure, I'll take uh, this one's I think very straightforward. This is simply uh, an addition over top of the existing garage and converting the garage to a biddable space and both neighbors on each side are supportive. I think the variances before us are quite minor and I don't think this would be have a negative impact on the street or the neighborhood at all. I would move approval with no conditions. Alrighty, uh, Ms. Hayes second, so motion to approve. Moved by Mr. Clay, seconded by Ms. Hayes. All in favor? That carries unanimously, thank you. Item number 23, 72 Perth Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, landscaping plans, floor plans and elevations. Covering letter from Mr. DeFranco, the agent, previous council decision, uh, a couple of bylaws affecting the property, an arborist report prepared by Ferris and Associates, a sun and shadow study provided by the agent as well as supporting materials and presentation materials were received um, with our supplemental agenda late yesterday. We have uh, email correspondence from transportation services. They don't have any concerns. And um, uh, we have correspondence from the project manager, third party project reviews from Metrolinx. And um, they didn't have any concerns that I, that I could see. Correspondence in opposition from number 83, and I am only showing the agent uh, as a speaker. Okay, do we have the agent on the line? We do, Mr. DeFranco is unmuted. Thank you, um, uh, Antonio DeFranco here. I'm a planner with Urban Strategies. Uh, our address is 197 Spadina Avenue, and uh, I'm working on behalf of the landowner who is Castle Point. Okay, um, let me see, panel members, uh, do you have any questions for Mr. DeFranco? Mr. Clay. Just a quick one. Um, we're adding a number of units um, to this uh, development. Is the unit mix changing at all? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So what, what's happening in the essence of the variances before you today is that because of the inclusion of a geothermal heating and cooling system, the former mechanical penthouse is being largely repurposed as occupiable living space. And so what's happened is that the unit, the GFA has increased slightly, the unit count has also increased slightly, um, and, and, and the mix is pretty much the same. There's a mix of one, you know, one, one and two bedrooms primarily. So overall, the, the mix has, you know, hasn't changed substantially, and we are meeting the, uh, the zoning bylaw requirements as well for, uh, for, for the three bedroom units. So the, oh, you are, okay, that's good, I suppose that. So the, the additional 20, are they singles or, double, or um, two bedrooms or, or one or the other? Um, it's, I believe it's a mix of ones and twos primarily. Okay. And you meet the th threshold for threes? Uh, yes, we do. Yeah, okay. it's not flagged as a variance at all. Great, thanks. Any other questions, Ms. Hayes? So uh, although the purpose talks about 11 stories, that included the mechanical penthouse correct as a story and that's why you need variance number nine because it's going to be habitable space exactly we, we do have a cross-section drawing that compares the original massing with the new massing and you can see how the mechanical penthouse level which was previously approved and included is essentially just occupiable space now and so the only mechanical projection that you'll see on this on the cross-section drawing 
is a, a small projection of the uh, elevator overrun. But it, you're right. I think the the 11th story is essentially was formerly the mechanical, and now it now it's a living space. So although it's marginal, but the 0.3 in height then is is just as a result of some drawing changes. Yeah, the point three relates only to the mechanical uh, overrun. Sorry, okay. the elevator overrun. Um, but okay. but otherwise, yeah, that, that that's the only uh, height variance needed. Okay, and the amenity space isn't changing; it's just uh, less per unit. Correct. It, that's right. It, it actually has gotten bigger with the addition of the twenty units. The the amenity space as a whole has gone up, but okay. because the unit count has increased, there's a slight deficit of I think I think thirty two square meters. Um, despite the overall increase in many space. All right, thank you. Um, okay, did you, by the way, want the cross-section drawing? Because I was going to tell staff it's in the um, in the supplemental agenda. I'm okay, I'm okay. You're I'm okay? okay? All right. Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? All right, sir, we're ready to go into committee. Uh, is there anything you want to add that you feel we need to know before we make a decision on this one? Um, I, I think, thank you, Chair. I think, I think you already mentioned that there's no objection from transportation services staff on the parking variance. There's just a loss of two parking spots. And then I would just note that there's no objection from city planning staff either. Okay. And uh, we did also read that council um, approved this coming before committee, so. Yes, exactly. Alrighty. Um, okay, we're in committee. Ms. Hayes. Thank you. I think what's being proposed um, is sort of not uncommon as these developments sort of go further. I think the addition of the 20 units um, is good to provide more housing stock. In terms of the built form, it was 11 stories with a mechanical penthouse. Now it'll be 11 with the units. So I don't think there's any greater impact there. The person who wrote in with objections had some concern about the number of units, but I don't think additional 20 units is going to make a substantive change. Um, this uh, has uh, transportation has no objections, planning has no objections. I think uh, this meets the four tests and I'd like to move a motion to approve the application and I believe there are no conditions. Okay, do I have a seconder, Ms. Chan? So motion to approve, moved by Ms. Hayes, seconded by Ms. Chan. All in favor? This carries unanimously. Thank you. Item number 20, 24. It's 126 Winnet Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Seven photographs of the property, and we have one variance before us. Do I have the agent on the line? We do. We have Pamir Rafiq on the yeah. line. Hi. Hello. All righty. Um, can you identify yourself for the record? And you're speaking on behalf of Mr. Tesler, the owner? That's correct, yes. Uh, the applicant, yes. OK. Um, and you're Pamir Rafiq, right? Pamir Rafiq, yes, correct. Pa uh, Pamir Rafiq, Lucid Homes. Uh, 33 Heaven Crescent, Milton. Okay, thanks. Um, panel members, this is very minor. Um, any questions for the uh, agent? Okay, sir, we are ready to take this into committee to make a decision. Is there anything you want to add before we uh, go into committee? No, not really. I okay. think it's pretty straightforward. It is. I'm happy to okay. answer any questions if there are any. No, there aren't any, so we'll take it into committee to make a decision. Ms. Chan. Yeah, we all agree. I think this is very um, straightforward, and I think they're asking for just 5% more. And I, I would like to move for approval with no conditions. All right, do I have a seconder, Mr. Reed? So, motion to approve, moved by Ms. Chan, seconded by Mr. Reed. All in favor? This carries unanimously. Item number 25, 334 Willard Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Three photographs of comparable properties. Forestry is asking for condition number two. And we have uh, four people in support, and that includes both adjacent neighbors at 332 and 336. 
and I do not show any opposition speakers. Do I have the agent on the line? Yes, we uh, do. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair and committee members. My name is Toy Bobahi, 17 Bridal Trail, Midhurst, and I am the agent representing the homeowners. Okay. Um, panel members, do you have any questions for the agent? Okay, sir, um, we are ready to take it into committee to make a decision. Is there anything you want to add uh, that's not in the materials we have before us um, or that you think we should know before we make a decision? Uh, no, we feel confident that these are minor variances and um, unless you have any uh, clarification needs, uh, I'm willing to answer the questions, um, but uh, please proceed. Okay, all right, Com uh, committee members, we're in committee. Mr. Reed. Thanks, Chair. I'm happy to bring a motion for this application. I think it's very straightforward, mostly filling in the third floor with slight expansion to the roof line, um, and then a one-story, relatively modest um, addition to the back. The variances being requested are minor, uh, and I move approval subject to urban forestry condition two. Okay, uh, Ms. Hayes seconds. So motion to approve, including forestry number two, moved by Mr. Reed, seconded Peter, by Ms. Hayes. Peter, All should we, just as a friendly, should we, since they're enclosing the front porch, planning usually likes us to tie approval to the site plan so that the, do we need to do that in this case? Because it is a front yard setback. Right. Yeah, I think there's no harm in including that uh, site plan and maybe explicitly saying, um, that the front yard setback is tied to the first floor only. Right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thanks, so, with, so with that condition and forestry number two, the motion's moved by Mr. Reed, seconded by Ms. Hayes. All in favor? That carries. Item number 26, 130 Kennedy Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. A copy of the Bloor West Village Heritage Conservation District nomination form. We have email correspondence from transportation. Uh, they did not express any concerns. Forestry is looking for condition number two. We have um, support from um, uh, 2203 Bloor Street Rest, there next door. Uh, 2481 2199 Bloor Street West as well as residents uh, or from Cohill Drive East Liberty Armdale Clendenin and High Park Avenue uh, opposition from 117 Runnymede Road as well as the Swansea Area Ratepayers Association um, and I am just looking at the speakers list here, can we just confirm that I have three speakers in support? Through you, Madam Chair, we have three speakers in support and we actually have one speaker in opposition and I believe all four are on the line. So we may just want to start with the hey, agent. Could you tell me who's in opposition because I yes, don't sorry. have that. It's, it's Nicholas Singh. Nicholas, oh, for the uh, ratepayers, okay. Okay, um, so I will go with to Mr. Fung then and have him do a presentation. Jason Me? Fung, you've been unmuted. Oh yes, hello. Hello again. Uh, um, if you can just identify yourself for the record and then you have five minutes. Uh, we do have one opposition speaker. Okay, um, hello committee. Uh, I'm Jason Fung, the architect and agent for 130 Kennedy Avenue. Um, should I just, I'll just dive in? Yeah, do you need us to put anything on the screen before you start? Yeah, why don't we start with the drawings of the first page, um, just the cover. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll, I'll just begin. Uh, the proposal before you, uh, it's an extension to an existing daycare that is on site. Um, the current daycare only serves as a part-time daycare because uh, it doesn't have the outdoor play area requirement. Um, so hence this expansion. So uh, we had designed the second floor rear outdoor play area. Um, maybe if we go to A302, that sheet, it'll show that the second floor is only the front portion. It's about 20 feet on the southern side and 30 feet on the northern side. 
I'll wait for that to come up. A303. Um, yeah, so I mean, daycares are a bit of a spatial puzzle. And so the number of staff versus, you know, how many kids to supervise. Um, so we had designed a three, sorry, A303. It's the proposed second floor. Um, yeah, so um, there's three rotations of outdoor play for this outdoor space on the rear there that you can see on screen. Um, so, I mean, we worked really hard to create kind of a, a very beautiful and functional daycare for this community. Uh, in terms of the variances, it's in regards to property setbacks and parking. So, um, to the southern setback, we pulled the building back four feet on the main floor. So if we go back one page, please. Um, on the southern side, uh, we've we've pulled it back four feet for maintenance in that zone. And, and in fact, um, the owner of La Petite Ecole, she's been upkeeping <laughs> the 117 Runnymede's uh, zone in that area uh, with permission of that owner, um, as that area has become derelict uh, up until the, the, the owner has cleaned it up. Um, on the upper floor, yes, we are proposing a overhang that is a zero meter setback, um, but it does leave about two feet left for that side for daylight on the uh, 117 Runnymede side. Um, and the letter of opposition, it, it's in regards to this four story building, like 117 Runnymede just south of us is a four story building and it, it stretches from Runnymede all the way to Kennedy Avenue and our property is north of that. So their property actually casts a shadow almost 100% of the time onto our property. So, um, I, I mean, uh, we, we are mainly one story across most of the property except for the front. Um, the front is a, about 20 feet is, is two stories. Um, so in our opinion, I mean, the impact of daylight to 117 Runnymede is, is rather minor. Uh, on the north side, we are in. We have support from the neighbor at uh, Yogurties uh, 2203 Bloor Street West. Um, and in terms of the front yard setback variants, uh, we've worked really hard to match uh, 117 Runnymede. So if we can go to the site plan, if possible, that's um, either the first page or the third page. Yeah. So you can see the front yard setback. We are matching 117 Runnymede Road. Um, on the main floor uh, is actually actually on the main floor we've carved away so um, yeah uh, we're pulled back on the main floor versus the second floor does come out to match 117 running me to the south um, in terms of parking um, we are, we're maintaining the existing asphalt in the front and um, for daycare use it will be a lot of drop off so the existing asphalt that exists there will will function as a drop off zone um, the staff take public transit to get to uh, the, the location. Uh, Runnymede Station is, is like two minutes north by, by walking. Um, and so, I mean, it also bringing us forward, it would help alleviate our own, the, the owner's problem of uh, a lot of non-daycare parking that has been illegally occurring in the front of this property. Um, currently, there's an awkward kind of three spaces drawn on site. Um, and we have correspondence from transportation services that state they do not object to this proposal. So um, with respect, we hope that the committee views this proposal as favorable. Uh, we feel these variances are minor and will provide, you know, a quite a nice daycare for the, uh, for the community. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, if I can go in order of the speakers here. Um, so do you have them all? Yes, we do. And Madison Chiatau is now unmuted. Thanks. Hi. I'm good to just start whenever. Hi. Yeah. Uh, can you identify yourself, please, for the record? Sure. My name is Madison Chiatau. Okay. And your address? 35 High Park Avenue. Okay. And you're in support of the application? I am. Yes. All right. Um, go ahead if you want to give us your reasons why. Sure. So I am speaking in support of the application. I have a child who has gone through this school already. I have one that attends currently, and I have one who will attend in the future. Um, I think the program has been wonderful. The space is great, and it's been so far a pleasure to send my children there. Um, so it's my understanding that the purpose of this committee is to determine the variances requested by the applicant, um, to determine whether they are minor in nature, and then I guess weigh the benefit of the variances against the cost of the community. 
Um, so I'm a resident of the community and I would like to suggest that the benefit of adding more full day quality childcare spaces is an obvious benefit to our community and the city as a whole. Uh, I think it's been made very clear that our city desperately needs more childcare spaces and here we have somebody trying to provide some. Um, when I look at the immediate context of the proposed project, it's my understanding that the applicant wants to extend her building in a couple directions while maintaining some level of setback. Um, going to the property line on the second floor, um, I think whatever um, the last presenter just explained. Um, so I understand it to be matching in most places and in some cases taking up less space than the, I guess, the big apartment next door. Um, I also understand that the property will be losing some parking in exchange for more childcare space and outdoor space for children to play in, and I couldn't think of a better trade-off, especially given the relatively abundant parking in the area. There's two green pea lots nearby, there's tons of street parking, a subway station, and not to mention lots of parents walk or bike their children to school. Um, I think in the larger scheme of things, based on like the general vibe and the actual policy coming from the provincial government, as well as the new immigration policy coming from the federal government, it seems that we're likely to see a big increase of density and population in this immediate area, specifically due to the proximity to Runnymede Station. So I think it won't be too long before we kind of look back and wish that the applicant had maybe been maybe more ambitious in terms of height so as to better serve what will hopefully be a very vibrant and growing transit oriented neighborhood. I think sometimes as well in these community meetings, um, sometimes we fail to take into account the needs of future neighbors, community members, and children who aren't aware of how these planning decisions will affect them and who also deserve to be included. I think most of the people who will benefit from this proposed project have actually yet to be born. Um, so I think these variances in conclusion are very minor in nature and the benefit of the proposed project will vastly outweigh any costs. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, uh, if we can go to the next speaker, please. Next speaker is Nicholas Singh. Hi, Mr. Singh. Hello, yes. Okay, if you can just identify yourself, um, and then you have five minutes, sir. Sure, I'm Nicholas Singh. I'm with the Swansea Area Rate Pairs Association. Um, in response to comments, I'll, I'll look at that first. Um, I understand that uh, the the speaker just now is at 35 High Park Avenue, not, not actually in the neighborhood. Um, and in relevance to the uh, use of the space. Um, we recognize the, the value of daycare facilities in the neighborhood and, and the, the value it does give to the livability of the neighborhood, but um, we also recognize that there is a, a need for the expansion to be sensitive to the surrounding neighborhood and in particular to the neighbor at 117 Runnymede, the immediate neighbor. Um, this is an apartment building next door that provides much needed rental accommodation uh, and it's also been nominated for inclusion on the heritage building registry it should be considered in that context uh, a bit of background on the uh, application for um, heritage registration uh, some years ago four resident associations on both sides of Bloor Street submitted an application for the Bloor Street corridor to be designated as a heritage conservation district. We had a tour by the heritage uh, department and this building at the 117 Runnymede was pointed out to us as a building of interest and it was recommended that it should be nominated for inclusion on the heritage building registry. So our application included it. Um, our application as we went through the process was folded into the Avenue study for Bloor Street, which was being done in parallel with the Heritage study. We're currently awaiting the final reports on the, the Avenue study. Um, because of the nomination, we feel that the building um, is important and uh, we have some big concerns regarding that side yard encroachment and the uh, front yard encroachment. Um, setting aside the, the nomination for now, from a practical point of view, covering windows and blocking views with walls or roofs, as the um, architect had said, barely two feet away, uh, in, is, is really problematic. 
um, it, especially in situations where they, they are the only connection to the outside world. We believe this is obviously undesirable. Uh, such conditions will reduce the desirability of the apartments and their market value and will impact the viability of the building. And viability is key to maintaining heritage buildings. So for these reasons, we believe that the side yard setback should be maintained and the application for zero setback should be refused. If you would uh, refer to photo one for me, please, of my submission. The proposed setback has similar problems. There we go. Um, it has similar problems. We note that the, the Runnymede Arms is wider at the front of the building than it is uh, throughout the um, other part of its, its, its length. And if you move the building as it exists now to the front of the building, and extend it up by the seven feet that are proposed for this building. Um, you can see that the extension uh, would affect the ground floor windows, the second floor windows, and the third floor windows, covering them with walls or a roof. So this is problematic uh, in, in, in terms of, of livability for that, for that apartment building. Um, further, uh, if you could go to photo two, um, yes, the, the sign here demonstrates the issues that exist currently with the, the property there. Um, the sign prohibits uh, turning during four of the 8.5 hours indicated on the sign and speaks to the, the situation that exists there with the um, businesses across the road and speaks to the need to maintain those those parking spots. Um, we, well, in, in summary, we believe that, that on their own, the issue of loss of light, obstruction of view, and views of walls or, or, or the roof, by walls of the roof, um, and the increasing traffic concerns are not conditions that are minor or desirable. We also believe they don't maintain the intent and purpose of the official plan or the, or the zoning bylaws. Um, in addition, the, the nomination for the Heritage Registry urges uh, additional caution. We note that the, the property itself has room uh, within it, the as of right permissions to expand and the association would be quite willing to sit down with the owner and the neighbors to explore how expansion beyond the as of right might be agreeable to all partners. We do note that there was a letter from the owner of the building next door um, who um, uh, outlined some of the problems they expect to have. Um, Mr. Mr. Singh, please make your final comments as you reach sure. over the five minute limit. Should the committee decide to approve the variances, we note that the uh, the setback applies to the cantilevered second floor. So if approved, the committee should uh, include a condition that it be built as per the plans submitted uh, so that the existing uh, first floor um, uh, aren't moved also. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Um, okay, any questions of the speaker, panel members? No? All right, do you have Shelly Ann? We do, Shelly Ann is unmuted now. Hi, good afternoon, committee. Uh, my name is Shelly Ann Castro, and I am the owner of the business across from uh, 130 Kennedy. Uh, my address is 2199 Bloor Street West. Our business is a fitness facility movement studio. Uh, the reason I am in favor of this um, variance to happen or for this to be built out the way that it is desired is because of what service uh, is being provided by um, the applicant. Uh, basically, with the child care services they provide, it gives an opportunity for the parents to come and move with us in our studio. This is not the only school in this uh, neighborhood. So with regards to the parking and the sign that was just recently pointed out by the previous speaker, um, this is not the only school and this is that time frame in which parents are picking up and dropping off their children, why those signs are there. And it has been a problem with regards to parking on that lot um, that is not normally uh, used for Le Petit Le Col, the property in, in question. So um, I'm definitely in support uh, just for how it has affected the street that we are uh, connected to and how it supports the parents that can move with us. We've seen an increase in um, having 
parents come and move with us because there is childcare that's close by. Uh, this particular facility also offers a French immersion program, which does not exist in the neighborhood. So I think it is very important as it brings in a particular parent who is looking for that for their child. And then it allows us to offer that service after they've dropped off their children to come and move with our business. So we are definitely in support of this and, um, and are happy to see this through. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions of the speaker? Okay, thanks. Um, do we have the final speaker? Yes, we do. Bianca Carter is unmuted now. Hi, Bianca? Yes, can you hear me? I can. Can you please identify yourself, name and address for the record, and then you have five minutes? Of course. My name is Bianca Carter. Uh, my address is 2481 Bloor Street West. I've been a business owner in the Bloor West Village for 13 years. I'm also a board member for the Bloor West Village and have seen immense growth um, in the time that I've been here. Um, many families and young professionals, and I can say as a new mom of a three-month-old child, um, signing up and looking for a daycare has been quite challenging. Um, I'm in support of this uh, build, and when I look, I'm no, I'm no architect by any means or um, we're, lo we're losing you hi Bianca we can't hear you anymore the small variance that is being requested rather my with you how about now uh you're cutting in and out no how about now Yes, yeah, say something else. Can you hear me? Yeah, try again. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, we, we missed the last two or three sentences that you said. Okay. Um, I said that it's, it's cutting out again. Are you three-month-old child and finding shelter is rather difficult. I'm on my laptop in a quiet space in it's my business. Really so I'm not sure. like it's really weird. Like, it I actually... Try to call in from my... It's, yeah, it sounds like you're walking around. It's just in and out, in and out, in and out. One second. Okay. I'm going to dial in. Okay. I'm, I'm dialing as we speak. Okay, I'll leave it to staff then to find you as you dial in. I don't see a number here. What's the meeting code, sorry? Never mind. Did you find it? Yeah, Bianca, I did. Bianca, we will call you, okay? Just stay by your phone. Okay. Okay, Bianca, you can go Please ahead. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I had last said I have a three-month-old child, and finding child care is rather challenging um, in my latest experience. And so having, you know, more space to do that would be very helpful. And I don't know if this came across already, but um, in comparison to the building surrounding um, what we're in support of, um, I think it's rather minor um, and a super important cause uh, that we as moms, families need. Um, and so I'm hoping that this will um, be passed forward. Okay, thanks, Bianca. Uh, panel members, do you have any questions for the speaker? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'll go back to Mr. Fong. Hi there. 
<clears throat> hi, hi there. You can, can you address the issues um, that were raised? Yeah, sure. Um, in terms of, I guess the big one is is this kind of height um, against the second floor windows of, I guess, 117 Runnymede. Um, we could look at the opposition's letter. Uh, I, I don't know how they get to the conclusion that we'll block the third floor. Our, our building's only six meters tall. It's, it's only two stories. So, and that's only for the front, basically seven meters. I get 20 feet on that side. So, <laughs> I, I mean, from a, a a window blockage perspective, it's it's quite minor. Uh, and those windows on that side, if we if we scroll down to the image, um, they're I, I believe they're washroom windows. So they're, they're they're the two little windows there on the second floor that are quite high up. No, no, down down a floor. There we go. Those those two right there. That's that that's kind of I think the. Um, biggest issue, but uh, I mean the sun. The sun's not coming from the north, so um, largely uh, it's getting soft light already. Um, and on on our side, uh, from a from a design standpoint, um, we we've we've optimized. This is this has been many permutations of of trying to get three classrooms that work in rotation. Um, and looking at the numbers for area, you know, 25 children for the for the preschool zone on the second floor matches perfectly with the 25 children for the outdoor play in adjacent to it and the rear. Um, that's yeah, I, I, we're just trying to optimize in terms of provide um, um, good spaces for for this daycare. Um, I think that's largely the, the biggest issue that the parking one I, I don't have an answer to. Uh, I, all that I can say is transportation services doesn't have an opposition to it. Um, parking is always a challenge in the city, but um, as one of the speakers in in uh, support has mentioned, there are many green peas around, and um, yeah, that's um, that's what I'll say about those those items. Okay, panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. Fong? No, Miss Hayes. So can you explain to me why it's not possible to to for the um, notch at the front of the building at 117 that you can't bring that second floor back in line with the first story that you're proposing instead oh. of being cantilevered there? Hmm. Yeah, so if we go to the plans on, on our, our drawings, A301, I believe, uh, the proposed uh, main floor. We're showing them um, A3, 301, yeah, um, past the demolition drawings. Um, we are showing two uh, toddler spaces, so toddler one, toddler two, and there's a whole ratio behind that. Uh, 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 getting, you know, 10 children in one, 15 children in another, there's a whole percentage to that. On the main, on the second floor, we are showing a, uh, a preschool room, so that's a different age category for children. Um, it works out perfectly to get the outdoor play area and the preschool to be on the same floor having the toddlers together on the same floor work but we can't swap the two like the areas don't work if we swap the the pre the the, the toddlers to be on the second floor and putting the preschool on the main floor um so we figured to optimize we optimize the main the the, the second floor and make this the first floor a little bit carved back and then there's the issue of access so we carved away if we go back a, a page we carved away on that side so you do have the access on the lane uh, on the the side it's yard setback on the on the south side um there's about six feet there from our building to the worst point in the front at 117 runnymede um it's almost 10 feet by the time you get into the property um it's really important to have access back there and and to swap that it just it, it, it doesn't work uh, uh functionally from a design standpoint any other questions? So are you so you're saying to me that the size of the room on the second floor has to be that size for yeah. the number of students? Yeah, yeah. So we wrote it on the next page. Um, you can scroll into the, um, the preschool room. There is a size requirement. It's per child. It's it's written in the Ministry of Education um, rules. Uh, you need 720 square feet for 24 children. Um, and that also works with the, the staffing requirements. There's a whole ratio with that. Um, we're providing slightly larger because we don't want to be meeting expectations. We want to be exceeding 
uh, regulations. So, I mean, I, I, there's also things that are going to be in the way, toys, you know, uh, uh, play, uh, 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 learning areas. Um, it is in our interest to try to provide a larger classroom. Um, and so we're at 757 square feet, um, just, you know, 30 square feet above what's required. To shave that down, I mean, like, things are going to happen in the, in the uh, engineering process that might eat into that. So we just have to be very careful that we don't fly too close to the sun as well. So um, that's why that, that room is that size. Okay, any other yeah. questions? No more questions, panel members? If not, we'll take it into committee then. Ms. Uh, Chan. I can start. I think this is a great project. I know that there's a lot of uh, little uh, problem, or I do not see the benefit of cutting the corner on the second floor uh, to the overall design. I, I do not see it. And I'm glad to see something like this uh, being proposed because we always emphasize uh, intensification of housing and all, but childcare is always left behind. So I think this is a good project to make use of a site and provide good quality childcare facility. I, um, and, and I think those uh, variants are being uh, requested are minor. Mr. Clay. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd agree. I think this is a very modest infill uh, pro, uh, proposal for um, a type of facility that I think everyone would agree is, is needed and appropriate, and particularly given its proximity to Bloor Street. Um, and uh, I, I really don't think that the argument that there is a disproportionate negative impact on the uh, adjacent apartment building holds water in my view. This is only a 20-foot section that's going up a second story. Uh, it is outside uh, bathroom windows. Um, I don't also buy the argument that it would have a negative impact on its heritage designation if that in fact goes forward. Um, I think this is a, a very supportable application um, and uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be voting for it. I'm happy to move a motion if no one else wants to speak to it. Yeah, go ahead. Sure, I'll move a motion to approve this application subject to forestry number two. And that's seconded by Ms. Chan, so motion to approve, including the forestry condition, moved by Mr. Clay, seconded by Ms. Chan. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Um, item number 27, 63 Tranby Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, two photographs of trees. We have email correspondence from Heritage asking for a condition. Um, and we have two variances before us. I don't show any opposition speakers. Do I have the agent on the line? Yes, we do. Good afternoon. It's Catherine Fries at 320 Lonsdale Road. Hi, um, panel members, do you have any questions for the agent? Okay, uh, Catherine, we're ready to make a decision on this. Anything you wanna add that's not in the uh, material we have before us, and I'm assuming you're aware of the heritage condition. Yes, I've spoken to heritage, we have no problem. We were just uh, trying to deal with a uh, chimney that's not used, but uh, we will certainly keep it. Uh, the the owner is working uh, to get a heritage grant to replace the slate roof at the front of the property and they have spoken to the neighbors directly east, west, north and south, um, no issues so they didn't make any um, notifications to the committee. Um, I think it's a very minor application and we're intensifying the use of the property so it's a growing family of three young boys, so okay. you need the space they can get. Alrighty, thank you. Um, let's take it into committee for a decision, panel members. Mr. Reed. Thanks, Chair. I think this is a very reasonable application, particularly with the massing of the addition um, towards the middle of the site, potential for overlook um, or any other negative impacts are really minimized. So. And with just two variances being requested, they're um, 
they're not extreme. I move approval of the application subject to the heritage condition. Okay, on your seconding, Ms. Hayes, so motion to approve with heritage as condition in the October 26th report, moved by Mr. Reed, seconded by Ms. Hayes, all in favor? That carries unanimously, thank you. Item number 28, 680 Wellington Street West. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, a copy of revised site plans, floor plans and elevations, two photographs of trees on the property, previous decision affecting the property and planning <clears throat> has conditions uh, that we received in the supplemental report. And I am, oh, Mr. Fung, I believe is back with us. And uh, do we have him on the line? Hello, uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair. Hi, are you there? I lost you. Hello, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair and committee members. My name is Eddie Perez. I'm here on behalf of the owner and the designers. We're at 537 Rogers Road. Oh, sorry about that, Eddie. I was looking at the next one. I think um, the sun is affecting my vision here. Okay. Um, I don't think we need a presentation. Panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. Perez? Mr. Clay? Sure, it's a quick, it's a quick one. I'm struggling to understand the, the parking situation. Uh, maybe you can just give me the little rhyme and verse on that. I It looks like from the photo that the access to the parking spot is uh, through the corner. Um, yeah, it's going to be in the corner. Uh, if you can put up the drawings, it just goes in from that curb cut there, and then it's going to go into that little angle that's on the the side there. Well, that that's that's a pedestrian. So that's a corner. Usually, it's sloped for pedestrians or wheelchairs to access. So that's a that's a legal curb cut for your driveway. Yeah, and then it's going to. If you look at the the, the elevations, you can see how the it's higher up so that the car will fit underneath. Okay, and transportation has no issues. Transportation, no issue. Planning only asks us for green space. That was it. So the green space they've asked for is on the boulevard? So on where the boulevard, exactly? that's, that's correct. That's right on Wellington? That's correct. It's on the, I think there's a photo there. It's on the, the it's, right now it's asphalt. Where okay. the fire hydrant is, that area there, they want it to be green. So transfer. So I'm I'm sorry, but transportation raise any issues about safety about backing in and out of a no. driveway on a corner. No, we don't have any okay. uh, anything from transportation whatsoever. There's a car that parked there all the time anyway. That's where the gentleman parks uh, at this time at present. He always parks there as well. Okay. There there was nothing from transportation whatsoever. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? All right, Mr. Perez, we're ready to take it into committee. Anything you want to add that's not in the materials? No, I feel that the application is minor. And like I said, it, it came before you on uh, previously on July uh, 2017 with uh, variances that were greater and it was as a three unit. And we're proposing as a two. So I feel that uh, what we're proposing is even better than what was proposed last time. Well, less impact, I mean. So I feel that this project is minor in nature. Thank you. Okay, let's take it into committee then, panel members. Ms. Hayes. I remember this application, the last, or this property, the last time I was at the board and doing a site visit at the time, it's really quite a unique and site but also a very constrained site i think what's being proposed here um is a quite creative use of the lot and i think the variances in the context of the lot and in the area um i feel are appropriate and i think they meet the four tests and i'd like to move a motion to approve the application subject to the planning conditions okay do i have a seconder for that motion Mr. Reed, so the motion's moved by Ms. Hayes, seconded by Mr. Reed, including the condition in the October 27th planning report. All in favor? Uh, carries unanimously. Thank you. 
Item number 29, 2 Hanson Road. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. One photograph of the subject property. We have eight form letters in support from residents on uh, Jesmond, uh, number four Hanson, which is adjacent, and residents on Oakwood, as well as number one Hanson. Um, and this is the one that Mr. Fung is back with us on. So do I have Mr. Fung on the line? Yes, we do, and he's unmuted. Hello. Hi again. Um, are you speaking on behalf of um, Sterling and Tina Lynn too? Cause that is correct, yes. Okay. Um, I don't think we need a presentation. Uh, panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. Fung? Ms. Hayes. Just looking on the site plan, there is, uh, and in terms of the landscape variance, there's quite a large uh, concrete area that you're going to replace again with hard landscaping. Um, does the size of that space need to be as large as you're proposing? Uh, yeah. I guess the I, bottom I, line is, can you improve the conditions at all? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the replacement, so currently that concrete slopes towards the building. Um, the replacement is to remediate and put a gutter drain right at the um, the patio doors on the main floor. Uh, we would love to maintain it. Uh, the, the reason for this second story addition is because they had a baby, that the owners had a baby, and, and so it's it's for playing, playing sports out there. Like, it, it's meant to be a, a usable pad out there. Um, yeah, so we would love to maintain uh, the, that concrete in the rear, if possible. Uh, if the committee were to uh, consider this, would you uh, would you have a problem if a condition was that the hardscaping be made of permeable materials? Yeah, I think that's that's within reason. Uh, like it could be paved with um, something, yeah, more permeable. I think that's that's within reason. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have a question? Okay, Mr. Fung, not seeing any other questions. Is there anything you'd like to add um, that you feel we should know before we take it into committee? No, I think it's relatively straightforward and um, yeah, uh, thank you for your time. Okay, um, panel members who are in committee. Ms. Chan. I, I think that this is quite a reasonable uh, proposal, and then that I don't think the extension uh, uh, will uh, create a negative uh, impact because it more or less line up with the house to the north, and the uh, variances and uh, I think they are uh, minor in nature, and with uh, Joanne's uh, suggestion of using. Uh, permeable material on the hard surfaces at the rear yard, I, I think I can move for approval. Yeah. Okay, do I have a seconder for that motion, Mr. Reed? So motion to approve, uh, to approve the application, including a condition for hardscape um, uh, to be permeable pavers, moved by Ms. Chan, seconded by Mr. Reed. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Thank you. Item number 30, 186 Woodville Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, a copy of the revised site plan. Uh, we have five photographs of the subject property, six photographs of trees on the property, a previous decision uh, that's in our supplemental agenda affecting this property. We have uh, email correspondence from planning. They didn't express any concerns a nine signature petition uh, of residents in support and that includes number 184 and 188 so both adjacent neighbors and I'm only showing the agent as a speaker do we have him on the line yes we do and he is unmuted good afternoon madam chair my name is Trevor Gain I'm the agent here on behalf of the owners um, good afternoon um, panel members we have three variances before us. Uh, do you have any questions for the agent? Ms. Hayes. Um, the lot area, the uh, the previous decision um, 
you know, allowed for quite a large home. Uh, and you're at 40, I think 42 point something. Is there any other, uh, sorry, brain tongue work together. Any other properties in the area where we've, we're at 52% coverage? Uh, we didn't do the research on it. Um, the, the, the problem is the new owners who just purchased this property about a, uh, in the spring, their, their hands are tied. So, you know, like any family, we would want the a garage just for their car, for bike storage, whatever, for their family. And here's the number. And the way we kind of did it to try to minimize this coverage number as much as possible, that the bylaw allows 10% of an accessory structure. We kept it to the absolute minimum to sort of enclose the parking space. So we're at eight, and that's what's generating that 52% uh, coverage variance. And then at the second point of that is that we pushed our garage all the way to the back corner of the property as much as we can. Uh, there's no way we can meet the setback variance because our property is only 10 and change meters wide and we need a six meter setback. Um, so with that, you know, the massing is kind of hid, like the house will sort of represent the majority of the massing on the property and the garage is completely secondary and kind of tucked back on the existing pad. And, and in the photographs, I know I'm sure the committee saw that there was a garage, uh, uh, post-development or pre-development rather, and that garage is about two meters in front of number one more land. And now our garage is kind of, uh, you know, pushed all the way in the back corner. Um, you know, photograph three, you can see there's a shed. So it's going to be right tucked in there against the blank wall of the neighbors. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the best we can do. It's a completely site-specific thing here. It's not a, you know, purpose-built house and, and garage. It's, it's just a product of the new owners. And, and the, the numbers are generating the numbers, unfortunately. Any other questions, panel members? Okay, Mr. Gain, we're ready to go into committee. Anything you want to add that's not in the materials before us? Uh, just, just to highlight again that the neighbor, the owners went through the neighborhood. Everybody was welcoming uh, them to the neighborhood, and they have overwhelming support for the garage. So numbers aside, it is desirable in terms of no opposition, including planning. So I'll just end with that. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's take it into committee, panel members. Mr. Reed. Thanks, Chair. Um, I understand Joanne's point, uh, but I, I do think that this is a reasonable application in terms of they have meaningfully shrunken down the size of the garage compared to what was there before um, and located it, I think, sensitively uh, to the to the neighbors. And so um, I think it, it really does represent some sensitivity. And so I, I think it's worth supporting. And I'll, I'll move a motion to approve uh, with no conditions. Mr. Clay seconds. So mo motion to approve, moved by Mr. Reed, seconded by Mr. Clay. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Item number 31, 135 Cadorna Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, two photographs of trees. Uh, we have a staff report from Forestry asking for condition number one and correspondence in opposition from 137, which is adjacent. It's regarding um, softscape as well as the uh, side yard setback. Um, I'm only showing one speaker staff, is that correct? Just the agent? Yes, the agent, Patrick that is McAuliffe. Correct. Okay, thanks. Oh, hi, Mr. McAuliffe. Um, let me see if there's any questions. I don't think we need a presentation. Ms. Hayes has a question for you. Chair, no, uh, just point of clarification, just in reviewing the materials, is there a side yard variance that's required that's not noted in the notice? Uh, I don't believe so because we are in line with the existing house. Okay, but is the existing house come? Um... Well, that, yeah, this is a, this is what the uh, city had uh, sent us back as uh, as the uh, variances. Okay, so I just I was looking at what the neighbor to the north was indicating in their submissions. So yeah, just, if that's... if if that did come up later, we would just bring the house wall in. Okay. All right. It just was something that as I was reviewing the materials, it seemed that I didn't want to, I thought maybe something was missing from the variance list. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, Mr. Clay. Just in terms of the rear yard uh, soft landscaping, is that, I'm trying to uh, decipher the site plan, but is that mostly already, is that an existing condition? Yes, it's all existing. Did you see the picture under CA? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that shows a I... beautiful backyard. Yeah, it, it did look nice. That, that's the one I was looking at. So that's yep. what uh, I thought yep. might be just existing. The owner's a mason. That's why you see all the fancy stonework in the back there. Okay. Any more questions, panel members? Okay, Mr. McCall, if we're ready to take this into committee, is there anything you want to add that's not in the submissions? Are you there? Nope. There's nothing left for me to add. Nope. Okay, just checking. Okay. All right, let's take it into committee, panel members. Mr. Clay. Yeah, sure. I'll take the I'll, uh, start this one. Uh, I think this is a, a modest uh, uh, application. The rear yard um, addition is really quite small. Um, the uh, uh, front addition is really quite small. Um, I think the variances before us are really quite modest. I don't think this would have a negative impact. And we can see from the photos that the landscaping is actually quite attractive. Um, in the front and the back. I don't see this as being a negative impact on the neighborhood. I would move approval subject to forestry number one. Are you seconding, Ms. Chen? Okay, so motion to approve, including the forestry condition, moved by Mr. Clay, seconded by Ms. Chen. All in favor? That carries unanimously. The next item is item number 3223 Alcorn Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have a, a revised, um, a revision of the notice uh, that we got in our supplemental agenda, um, that the purpose has been revised as well as um, variance number eight. I think it's just a correction to say rear yard. Um, and then we have one photograph of a tree as well as a covering letter from the architect and supporting material from the architect. And I am only showing the architect uh, slash agent as a speaker. That's correct. Wow. We have Alec Ring on the line and he is unmuted. Okay, thanks. I'm Alec Ring from Alec Ring Architecture uh, presenting on behalf. Okay, um, I d don't think we need a presentation, but I can bear you hear you. I'm just going to see if the members have any questions, and if they do, can you just speak up a bit? Yep, can I just ask what that, yep. um, you said there was a rev revision? Yeah, maybe staff can just address it. I think it's just a correction, I, I believe, but... Maybe Sabrina, sure. you can uh, just clarify. through you, Madam Chair, Mr. Ring. If you see on the screen that we have up right now, and we're just going to scroll down to variance number eight and the highlighted section, so it's into the required rear yard setback. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Sabrina. Um, okay. Any questions, panel members, for the agent? No? Okay, um, Mr. Ring, we're ready to make a decision on this. Is there anything you want to add that's not in the submissions before I take it into committee? I don't think so. I think it's a, uh, sort of reasonably scaled and there's lots of precedent in the neighborhood for similar. Um, so I think they're uh, pretty minor. Okay, panel members, let's take it into committee for a decision then. Ms. Hayes. Thank you. I think what's being proposed as the applicant's agent has said is not out of line with other um, redevelopments in the neighborhood. And I think the dormer at the front, although a little uh, different, certainly maintain, maintains the the peak and the, it's just the size that's different. And I don't think that that presents um, anything that uh, um, would negate uh, uh, approval of the application. I think that the variances 
both individually and cumulatively are minor and appropriate. And I'd like to move a motion to approve the application. Uh, do I have to say as amended because of that notice or? Um, sure, just to be as, safe. As amended. And I don't believe there's any conditions. Alrighty, do I have a seconder? Mr. Reed, so a motion to approve the application as amended, moved by Ms. Hayes, seconded by Mr. Reed. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Okay, final item in this time slot is uh, number 33, 849 Coxwell Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Five photographs of comparable properties. We have 14 form letters uh, in support, and that includes number 851, which is adjacent, and 22 Fairside, which is behind. And uh, only show the agent as a speaker. Um, are you on the line, Mr. Masandrea? Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Leo Mastandrea. I'm the agent for the owner. And as well, we did speak to the other neighbor and he does not have any concerns. Planning has no concerns. I, pre I think this is a pretty straightforward application, but if you have any questions, I can do a presentation. Okay, well, I don't think we need a presentation, but let me see if there's any questions. Uh, anybody? It's your lucky day, no questions. So if you have anything to add, um, if you could let us know now before we go into committee. No, no thanks, that's great. Okay, let's take it into committee for a decision, panel members. Uh, Ms. Chan? Okay, I, mean, I, I think the variances are being requested are minor in nature, most of them, and I think the increase in GFA is more like comparable in the area. And uh, other than that, they also have a lot of supports in the neighborhood. And so I, I, I would like to uh, move for approval with no conditions. Okay, and uh, Mr. Reed, did you want a second? I thought I saw your hand up earlier. Okay, so the motion to approve moved by Ms. Chan, seconded by Mr. Reed, all in favor? That carries. Um, okay, so that concludes this time slot. Just give me one second to change files here. All right, so the next item is item number 34, 66 Silver Birch Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have forestry is asking for condition number two, and I believe they also had um, some advisory comments in an October 20th report, which um, I believe is in our supplemental agenda, I think. I'm not sure here. Okay. Anyway, we have um, just a second. My stuff is here. Okay, I got to get into the right file. Okay, I am showing just the agent as a speaker. Do we have him on the line? Yes, we do. Okay, you there, Mr. Kaleditis? Hello, good afternoon. Hi. Uh, can you just identify yourself for the record, please? Yes. Uh, my name is Theo Keladitas. My address is 69 Binswood Avenue, East York, Ontario. Okay. Um, you're aware of the uh, forestry report and conditions? Um, yes, we're aware of the report. Um, they're more of comments than conditions, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yes, so we're, we're, we're not sure... Uh, some of the comments, I guess, are a little general. So we're willing to kind of work with urban forestry, but uh, would need more clarification, I guess. Okay, um, they do have condition number two in addition to the comments, so we'll leave it to you to work all that out. Um, panel members, do you have any questions for the agent? I'm not seeing any questions, sir, so we're ready to take it into committee to make a decision. Uh, is there anything you want to add uh, that's not in the materials before us? Um, no, I'm here to uh, answer any questions. If you guys are okay, then that's great. Okay. Um, all right, panel members, let's take it into committee. <clears throat> Mr. Reed and then Mr. Clay. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I, looking at this 
at this application, I was surprised that the variances were so small because it's a it's a very large, uh, very large house that will be um, improved on. So I, anyway, all that to say, I think the variances being requested are minor um, in each of them uh, on, on their own merits, and I can see no real negative uh, issues. So I'm I'm glad to hear that the applicants willing to work with urban forestry to address some of their concerns. Um, so I'll move approval of the application subject to urban forestry condition two. Okay, um, do I have a seconder, Ms. Chan? So a motion to approve, including the forestry condition moved by Mr. Reed, seconded by Ms. Chan. All in favor? Okay, that carries unanimously. Item number 35. 163 Booth Avenue, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations. We have an arborist report and a tree protection plan prepared by Central Tree Care Limited. Forestry is asking for conditions two and three. We have support from um, 71 Empire, 154 Booth, 173 Booth and 175 Booth. And I, um, do we have the second speaker, um, staff, or just the agent? Through you, Madam Chair, just the agent. The second speakers are the actual uh, owners of the property. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, do I have the agent on the line if you can identify yourself for the record? Uh, good afternoon, Madam Speaker and uh, uh, committee members. My name is Elroy Van Grohl. I'm an architect with uh, Van Grohl and Associates, uh, and our do you need our, our offices are at 295 Robinson Street uh, in Oakville. Okay, um, panel members, do you have any questions for um, the agent? Mr. Reed. Thanks, Jared. More just kind of procedural. I'm just wondering because I understand that the laneway suite is currently under construction or under permit anyway. Um, could you just speak to the the timing of development on this site um, and how that relates to the variances being requested now? Uh, sure. The uh, a permit was applied for for the laneway uh, suite uh, on the basis of the existing house. Uh, and then uh, uh, the design was prepared for the house itself. And uh, the consequence of that was uh, that we need a, a very minor uh, a variance for what was proposed in the laneway house. And I should add that the laneway house already has a building permit and, and already has a, a, a revision to that building permit, uh, which was uh, uh, approved, uh, I, I think yesterday. Okay, and then, but the width of the the width of the laneway suite that that is a new that is a change to the existing building permit for for the, the laneway. Suite. The width will be a change to to the permit. Um, we're asking for that in this submission. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're going from uh, eight meters to eight point nine at the second floor. Okay. So uh, yes, it's a bit of a complicated. Um, I guess procedural question, but because the laneway houses don't have their own building permits, they're uh, they're associated with the house that they're developed with. So that I think is what's causing the complexity here. Thanks, Mr. Clay. You had your hand up, I think. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing as Peter did, but uh, I also wondered about the front yard. There's a bit of a deficit of soft landscaping, but I do note that the property line is quite close to where uh, the new build will happen. So is the area between your property and the uh, sidewalk, is that going to still be, it looks like it says grass. So is that going to still be grass or soft landscaping? The, the, yeah, the entire portion between the sidewalk and the property line will be grass other than the uh, geotex uh, walkway, which will also be grass. That's great. So, uh, I mean, so it's, a, it's a paver material that allows grass to grow in between. Oh, that's and I, 
I, if I if I may just clarify, I did go over the amount of soft versus hard landscaping with the planner uh, last week. He had a similar question about you know why why is the soft landscaping proportion so low? When you look at the plan, it doesn't look that low. But the issue is that uh, the plans examiner uh, didn't include a number of things. He just said, well, that's not soft landscaping. But if you take the planting, the grass, and, <coughs> and uh, those areas, uh, you come to 73% of land soft landscaping. Right. Um, and so it's it's not that we are short on soft landscaping, it's that the plans examiner in the zoning review uh, excluded a bunch of stuff in his calculation of it because he said, we can't count that, so. Yeah, sometimes depending on what the material is, it technically doesn't fall into the classification of soft, and that sounds like it's this case. And the right. fact that you're key, you're maintaining the, the uh, city owned portion in grass, I, th I think, you know, it satisfies anyone's concerns about hard versus soft. Uh, and if you look at the uh, properties on this particular street, there are many properties that have their porches right on the property line. They have no soft landscaping other than what's in the boulevard. So <clears throat> I would argue that the landscaping being proposed is uh, pretty good compared to uh, uh, other properties in the neighborhood there. Any other questions, panel members? Okay, um, we are ready to take this into committee. Is there anything you'd like to add before we um, we do uh, make a decision on this? Uh, I no, I don't have anything more to add. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, panel members, let's take it into committee. Mister Mister Clay. Sure, I'll, I'll move this one. I, I, I actually thought this was a really attractive design. Uh, the uh, I, I was originally concerned about the height, but that's only really just the peak portion of it. It's not a flat roof. I don't think it has a negative impact on the surrounding area. I thought the design for both the house and the uh, laneway suite was actually quite attractive, uh, with the exception. Of, thanks, Peter, for clarifying that on the uh, on the width. I didn't understand that either. Um, but it sounds like it's a m more technical process kind of issue. Um, uh, I, I think it's a supportable application. I'm happy to move approval subject to forestry two and three. Okay, do I have a seconder, Ms. Chan? So motion to approve, including the forestry conditions as outlined by Mr. Clay, and that's seconded by Ms. Chan. All in favor? Okay, that carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, item 36, 54 Appleton Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, planning justification from the agent. We have 11 form letters in support and they include 52 and 56, so both adjacent neighbors. We, in our supplemental agenda, received opposition letters from 165 and 163 Glen Home, um, and they're behind, so predominantly there are concerns about the rooftop deck as well as massing. And I do show uh, speakers for both those properties. Do we have both of them, um, Olivia? Or Olive, rather? Yes, we do. Okay, um, I guess I'll start with the agent then. We'll, um... Mr. Giordano, you are unmuted. Hi there. Hi, hi Madam Chair and all committee members. Uh, my name is Stephen Giordano. I'm the agent for the applicant at 54 Appleton Avenue. Hi. Can I ask you to do a presentation starting now? No more than five minutes, please. Yes. Yeah. yeah. After that, we'll hear from the opposition and then we'll have you back. Sure. No problem. If it's possible to pull up the report that we had uh, submitted. I'm just going to address a couple diagrams on there throughout my presentation, so I'll just start that now. Um, so what we have before us today is an application to reconstruct the existing third floor as well as give access to a rooftop garden. Um, so we've prepared this detailed report uh, with some diagrams to assist our reasoning for the application. I'm just going to quickly summarize the grounds for the variances requested. 
Um, so in regards to the building height and the rear main wall height, this portion has to do with just a small vestibule that is allocated um, to access the rooftop garden. Um, if we go to page six on the report, figure 1.1, uh, this one right here, yeah. So the orange area is the only area that is exceeding the bylaw and what the variance is referencing. Uh, all the other remaining areas, the green, pink, and blue, uh, conform and they're below the 11 meter allowable height. Um, so that orange area only accounts for 21% of the overall roof area. So we're not asking for height of the structure across the entire building. It is strictly to accommodate this vestibule to access the garden. Um, we place that vestibule uh, as much as we can to the front of the house and tucked it under the roof line to minimize any visual impact from the rear of the home uh, or any abutting homes from the rear. Um, for the rear wall, if we exclude this vestibule area, uh, the wall height of the third floor, which is what is primarily visible from properties on the rear, um, is in line with all other three-story um, flat roof dwellings that are constructed in the city. Uh, the design is meant to keep the front elevation compatible with the streetscape while giving us the minimum space required for an access space to the garden, which is that orange vestibule area. Um, we size that as the minimum possible just to get a doorway in there and access. Um, for the platform area itself and that variance, um, this is there to accommodate some green space on the property that um, this property has a rear yard garage, um, which is completely hardscaped from the driveway to those entrances. So there's no green space in the backyard at all. Um, the intent is to turn an otherwise unusable flat roof, which would need to be constructed regardless into something that would provide space for a vegetable garden and a small solar array. Um, we cannot put these solar panels on the garage roof that's already existing as there's a lot of mature trees in the back um, and that'll constantly cast a shadow on them. So if we go down to page nine, we kind of prepared a quick rendering to show the intent of this platform area. So in the rendering, um, as we can see, we're looking to mitigate any privacy concerns uh, by using solid walls as guards and tall planting, tall planting to completely obstruct any views both from the ground level looking up and from the rooftop looking down. Uh, we have no issues if there's a condition to add opaque privacy screens. Uh, our intent is to put these in regardless as the homeowner also doesn't want any negative impacts on privacy coming up or down. So if that is a condition, we're, we have no issues with that. Um, but in addition to privacy screens, uh, the large mature trees in the back um, add another layer of privacy to any properties abutting the rear. Um, so lastly, in regards to that platform, the overall usable space is approximately half of what is being requested due to the solar panels. It's not a usable space uh, that will only be used to maintain the equipment. Uh, the remaining will be used for the garden. And then just to address, I know we're going to hear from the neighbors at Glen Home, but to address some concerns about the size of our property and the dwelling, uh, we're not requesting any FSI variances. Um, we're building on an existing footprint of and 54 applicants on actually two lots. So, which means the development of this property can be far further than what we are uh, proposing at this time. Like as of right, we can put a four unit semi-detached duplex, um, but to maintain the existing character of the street, our proposal is to keep this property as a single family home uh, just for the, the homeowner to enjoy and continue enjoying with their family. Um, the direct front and rear neighbors on Appleton Ave, uh, Avenue have no concerns with our applications. So this includes 52, 53, and 56, uh, which the committee previously mentioned, uh, along with uh, multiple other neighbors on the street who signed measures of support. Uh, in addition, the two properties that directly abut us on their rear, they didn't voice any concerns with a uh, letter of objection. Uh, that's 159 and 161 Glen Home. Um, we'll touch base, I guess, later after the presentations from 163 and 165, but I'm hoping the explanations and diagrams uh, alleviate some concerns from their side. So with that being said, in summary, uh, we believe the design of the addition, we designed this addition in a manner that respects the privacy of all neighbors, as well as gives the homeowner usable green space where otherwise it'd be left barren. Uh, we believe the arguments outlined in the report that we submitted and this presentation showcased that we are requesting what we are requesting is minor in nature. The variances have only been requested where absolutely necessary, and planning staff had no concerns. Thank you. Hi. Um, just before I go to the opposition, if we were to um, a, a condition were to be put on, can you just clarify which sides you would be willing to put the opaque screening on? Yeah. So it'd be the um, the north, the south, and the west. Well, we're okay with all three sides. 
Okay. Chair, There'll can I say a technical question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, you've mentioned that there is no soft or no green uh, space in the yard, in the rear yard. I, looking at your site plan, you've got a driveway, you've got asphalt and interlocking pavers. So how, why don't you need a, a variance for soft rear, rear landscaping? How, so that, that's shouldn't you need a variance for that? That portion is all existing to remain on the property and we're not touching any, like we're not excavating anything further for this application. It's being constructed on the existing footprint of the house. So it does not trigger any landscaping requirements. Is that the case, Sabrina? I mean, isn't regardless of whether they're actually going into the back, to, doesn't that trigger a variance? Through you, Madam Chair, I'm just looking at the zoning review one more time just to make sure. And it's not noted on the zoning review. Um, perhaps maybe this could have been a missed variance, which means that if a decision is rendered today and it becomes final and binding, they may have to come back to committee if that's the case. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I'd like to go to the opposition now. Um, do we have the first person on the line? Yes, we do. We have David Pedersen. I, I didn't... Hi, sir. You're cutting in and out. Can you hear me now? Uh, say something else, please. I'm sorry. My name's David Peterson. Okay. And your address? 161 going home. Okay, we seem to be able to hear you right now. So you have five minutes, sir, starting now. Okay, well, I have a question for the, the committee. Is I, I can't get my head around a 600-square-foot rooftop platform against a 43-square-foot maximum uh, permitted as being a minor variance. Can, can you tell me how it can be considered one in this context? Well, what I can tell you is that under our democratic process that, um, you know, anyone has the right to submit an application to the committee. Um, it doesn't, you know, speak to what is reasonable or not, considered reasonable or not. It's people are allowed to apply for, um, for different variances. So that's the best okay. way I can answer it. That, that's fair. Thank you. Um, then my, I guess, purpose in asking to, to speak or to go on the record with this is that I would hope that if this is, if a terrace like this or a rooftop platform like this is to be built, then that the bylaws be amended so that everybody can, can do it. Um, I would hate to think that this one property will do it now and that if any adjacent property ever wants to do it in something similar in the future, that that precedent should hold and anybody else should also have the same opportunity. It should be everybody or nobody. Um, that's my piece. Okay. Um, just to let you know that each application is considered on its own merits and, um, you know, I can't, we can't speak to whether, you know, there will end, be, end up being more in the future or more not. It's just, but the committee looks at each application as a standalone item when they make their decisions. Uh, panel members, do you have any questions of the speaker? Okay, thank you, Mr. Peterson. Oh, and, yeah. and there is no mature trees between my house and, and of Appleton House. I'm sorry, there's no, I missed the word before trees. What kind of trees? Mature. The, the agent oh, mentioned mature that trees. there was greenery be between their house and all the houses behind, but there is no greenery in between his house and mine. Okay. Hey, thank you for pointing that out. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. Any questions for Mr. Peterson, panel members? Okay, thanks. Do you have the next speaker on the line? We do. We have Jacqueline Carson-Meyer. Hello, I see that I've been unmuted. You have. I just need your name and address for the record, and then you have five minutes. 
Jacqueline Carsemeyer, 163 Glen Home. To add to the information, uh, the mature tree that is being referenced or the mature greenery is a tree that is an oak tree. It's on our property. What happens and is happening presently is all of the leaves are falling. So yes, we have visual blocking from our tree with the lighting, which is presently problematic from the, that house that's under discussion on Appleton. But uh, most of the year, uh, there's nothing blocking that light. I want to mention that the owner of 159 Glenholm has passed away. Otherwise, I'm very confident that that owner would also have voiced some very strong objections. I want to mention also that the solid walls as guards would be very problematic if this goes forward. And I don't know the nature of opaque screening, but presently um, 52 Appleton uh, pardon me, 54 Appleton is, from our perspective, the only property on Appleton that has a brick wall um, into what is otherwise a green laneway that's quite wonderful. Um, between Appleton and Glenholm, there are no cars that drive through there. It's all green, except for this solid brick wall, which goes the full width of 161. Glen home. I was interested in the comment that um, the uh, proposal is in line with other three-story buildings in the city. There are very few three-story buildings that have occupied space in the uh, occupied residency on the third floor in the immediate area. That's all. Thank you. Okay, panel members, do you have any questions for the speaker? Okay, thank you very much. Can I have the agent? Back, please. Hello? Hi. Hi there. Uh, can you please speak to the issues raised? No more than five minutes. Yeah, definitely. So um, from what I'm understanding, the brick wall that they're referencing into that green laneway is just the detached garage at the back of the house. Uh, I mean, this is pretty standard for quite a few houses in, on St. Clair West Village that have garages in their rear. Um, this garage is not part of the application, so uh, that, that, like the comment about it disrupting the green corridor, uh, we don't have anything really to speak on that. Um, as for the lighting uh, issues, there's currently already windows on the third floor, and we're proposing the same a similar window in the same spot, so nothing's really going to be changing from that aspect. The only thing I could see is if we have an exterior sconce at the vestibule walkout, it's a, that's a fairly small light that we don't think will add to the light pollution. So in regards to lighting and all that, um, I don't think that's a matter of, for the committee to agree on at this moment. It's more so for the variances. Um, the the drawing package I did submit did show all the pictures at the rear of the pro uh, trees, pictures of the trees at the rear of the property. Sorry, not in the report, in the actual plans. So if we scroll down to the third page there, um, the middle photo on the bottom row is the view from the ground level of the backyard towards uh, 165 and 163. So not only, I, I may have said mature trees in the backyard there, but there's additionally trees in our rear yard that accommodate to this privacy. Um, and I believe Mr. Peterson was from 165 Glen Home. Um, quickly just measuring from our platform area to the property line at the rear, that's 55 feet. And then if I measure to their back main wall via Google Street View, it's approximately 93 feet. So I think between the screens, the trees, the distance to the property, like 93 feet is quite substantial. So um, having privacy concerns, I feel like we're, we're trying to mitigate this whatever way we can. We've uh, came, came up with a couple solutions to doing so with screens and planting. So at, at that point, and speaking on the area, we're planning to use this as a garden and for solar panels. We're not utilizing the, the entire space. Um, if other people in the future plan to construct a similar thing, the process will be exactly what we're going through. Um, we're looking just for, is it, this is a homeowner with his adult children living in here. This is not meant to be a party platform or anything like that. This is a garden space for people to use. That's, that's really all. Um, in referencing the, uh, for 163 Glen Home, the other three-story houses, 
Uh, that was in reference to the rear main wall height, not the platform area. Okay. Uh, panel members, do you have any questions? Mr. Clay. Just, uh, yeah, just to the F, and I'm, I'm just looking around, and I can't seem, uh, I can't find any other examples in the immediate neighborhood of rooftop um, platforms or patios or terraces or decks. Um, do, you, do you have any sense of the prevalence of that kind of a structure in this neighborhood? So I, I was referencing uh, two applications, uh, one on 240 Glen Home and one on 266 Louder. Um, so I was kind of using our numbers based on the usable space, which is about half of what we're requesting. So around 27, 28 square meters. Um, Louder was approved for 24.6 square meters and 240 Glen Home was approved for 19.8 square meters. So when we take into account we're only really utilizing half of the space, it more or less falls in line with these two applications that had been approved in the past. Sorry, can you just, just help me understand, help us understand, so the, the, it's a 55 square meter platform. Are you planning to use half of it for garden and half of it for amenity space? So if we go back to uh, the report, the plan justification report, and if we go to page nine, I prepared a small diagram to explain that. Um, yeah, this one right here. So that green, oops, sorry, the green highlight, so the total was the 55 square meters, but this green hatched in area is the area that I'm allocating just for the garden space, which is about 28.44. And the remaining will be for the solar array, which you can't walk on, you can't step on, that'll just be utilized for maintenance and for the trade and installer to come in and install it, service it yearly, things like that. But half of it will be allocated to garden space. So garden space isn't, you know, recreation space. It is, it's not, you're not gonna have lawn chairs out there or that sort of thing, are you? Uh, so the purpose is to have planters um, because we can't do a full green roof here for structural purposes. So we're gonna be putting planters on top um, have access to walk around the planters, water your garden, harvest the plants. There's a small area beside the door uh, allocated for like hose storage and things like that. So there's a small space outside the door that can be utilized for other purposes, but nothing substantial. And that's the furthest corner into the property where there's no visibility. Fair enough. So when you say a garden, so it is, it's basically a flat terrace that you'll be bringing in planters like movable planters it's not going that's to be correct a permanent like rooftop garden kind of structure that's correct yes it's going to be planters on top of the the roof structure any other questions panel members okay let's take it into committee miss chan yeah, I can start with a comment. Um, in the beginning, I thought that the roof uh, top uh, terrace, the size is enormous. But when I look at the design, it's actually half of it is like uh, dedicated for solar panels. And the other half is like a planting uh, area, which means that uh, the occupancy load is very small. Maybe a few people, a couple of people will be there. It's not really for like a, a large group of people gathering there. So I sort of uh, think that this, uh, I can support this idea um, of have uh, utilized the roof for you know, you know, uh, solar panels and also uh, uh, gardening. Yeah. Any other comments? Ms. Hayes? I have a couple of concerns. Um, first of all, I think we're mis missing a rear landscape variance, but the applicant will have to deal with that. Um, I don't, th the size of this platform, there's no, yes, the, the and I'm not doubting that they're saying now they want to be a garden, but it, it you're, you're not, you're not tied to that. This could be a full rooftop deck aside from the the um, uh, solar panels, and I think the size of it is, is, in my view, too large. I don't have a concern with respect to variances related to the, to um, 
um, you know, any changes to the house itself, but I'm um, the platform size I, I feel is too large. Um, what about if I suggest that, that if we were going to approve, tied it to the roof plans where they have shown specific um, sizes of uh, planters and solar panels. I feel that in any how that has to be part of the agreement. So they, they cannot, as you say, clear it all out and being uh, use it as a, a full uh, recreation area. I hear you, Yim. I, I just think it's it's too large, but that's my opinion. My colleagues might have other thoughts. Mr. Reed. Thanks. Uh, I agree. I think this is complicated. Um, like on the one hand, I I really enjoy seeing um, a rooftop being used used to an extent. You know, not just um, a blank space that generates heat. I think this is a this is a positive um, addition. I think you're growing food and, and creating energy. I think that's great, but I think it's more, my concern is more around, I think what Joanne's saying, the, how do we ensure that that, um, that is maintained over time? And I, and I think it's hard to do that. Um, but for this application specifically, I, I think that there is enough distance from neighborhood from the neighbors and um, screening being contemplated. And I w also I would agree with Yim's point about tying it to the roof plans, and so at least you get that stuff um, built at the start. So I, I would support it as well, even though it is very large. Okay. Um, and just a reminder that um, if we're putting a condition in um, for screening, it would be on the north, south, and west sides, opaque screening. So if there's no other comments from anybody, um, do you want to move a motion? Yim, go ahead. I would try to see what I get uh, this move. I'd like to move um, for approval uh, 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 subject to uh, for. Uh, uh, private private screening on on the roof deck, north, south, and west side, and also tied it to, to the uh, roof plans. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, the... so that motion then with those two conditions, um, opaque privacy mm -hmm. screening, north, south, and west side, tied to the roof plan, moved by Miss Chan, second. Right, Chair. Uh, just yeah. before. Uh, um... I'm, I'm, I guess my concern on this one is just a little bit that, uh, again, we're, we're sort of throwing our, our trust into the current owner that here, that they're going to be using it for a garden space, but you know, this could get sold, um, mm -hmm. and a future owner may choose to use it entirely differently. Um, so is it, which I don't think we as a committee are supportive of. I think um, is is it possible to throw another condition in that suggests that this rooftop terrace, given the purpose that's being presented to us today, uh, shall not be used for outdoor amenity space? Is that too is that well, too too um, fine of a point on this? I I think I, it's I a just, good idea. I think that maybe we should uh, uh, put it in the fact that any other use. Some on the side plan is not approved. Yeah, and I don't know how to define that. Like that. I guess that's my my challenge is that it's it's difficult to define everything else other than this. So that can't. So maybe it's the condition this this rooftop will be only used for the purposes as outlined um, in the submission, and and not allowed for anything else. Yes, I is think that, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's our intention too, right? Yeah, I mean, I I, I I get the whole idea. Of what, you know, the the you know, sort of an adaptive reuse of a rooftop for this kind of a purpose. But we're basically trusting that this owner will own it forever, and this owner will not own it forever, and whoever moves in in the future may use it entirely differently. 
Okay, Sabrina, for this condition, um, can we just, can we say tie to roof plan and other uses not shown or not permitted? Or is there a better way to word it? Through you, Madam Chair, you could say something along the lines of uh, the use as shown on the roof plan, and then we can quote the drawing number, shall mm -hmm. be permitted. Does that imply other uses are not permitted? And we say only, the word only in front of it? Yes, that would be correct. So, it, so then you're tying them to the roof plan, which shows the solar panels and the garden planters. So basically only uses as shown on the roof plan are permitted. And, that and we would, we would um, identify what that roof plan is by drawing okay. number. Does that sound okay, Larry? Does that yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I think that gets us to what we're trying to achieve. And I guess also gives, you know, the residents, the surrounding residents a little bit of comfort that this is the only use that's going to be permitted up there. Okay, and the opaque screening would be to 1.5 meters, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so the motion again then is moved by Ms. Chan. So uh, with the condition only uh, to use as shown, the, the only uses permitted are as shown on the roof plan, and then staff will put in the, the proper um, number. And opaque privacy screening to 1.5 meters on the north, south, and west sides. And do I have a seconder for that then? Okay, so that motion's moved by Ms. Chan, seconded by Mr. Reed. All in favor? And Ms. Hayes is dissenting. Um, okay, so that's approved with those two conditions. All right. Um, the next item is item number 37, 214 Monarch Park Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, a revised site plan, copy of a revised zoning notice, uh, and it's got in brackets, no changes, uh, correspondence from Mr. Galbraith, the agent. And um, we have a condition from planning, forestry is asking for condition number one, 15 um, form letters in support that includes number 212, which is adjacent, and we also had separate support from 216, which is also adjacent, and I'm not showing any opposition speakers uh, on this one. Do we have the agent on the line? Yes, Good afternoon, John Galbraith, planner here on behalf of the application. Hi again. Um, Hello again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're still hanging in there. Okay, um, panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. Galbraith? Okay, um, uh, Joanne, you have a question, and Peter? Uh, just more of a yeah, question in terms of, you've seen the planning report, do you have any, con any concerns with respect to the condition they're proposing? No, that seems entirely reasonable and it's, uh, it definitely clarifies the intent. We're good with this. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Reed, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, thanks. Just in regard to the uh, the driveway in the, the the parking situation, so is is the parking space to be provided in the front? Because that that only seems like it's half half on the the property. Correct. There's uh, an existing um, parking space that will be maintained. Yeah, and then that's licensed. Yes, that's my understanding. Okay. Otherwise, it would have triggered a variance. Okay, thanks. Uh, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Galbraith, anything to add that's not in the submissions before we go into committee? No, I think it's pretty straightforward and the footprint of the house is actually smaller than the existing. Okay, uh, panel members, let's take it into committee for a decision. Ms. Hayes? Thank you, Madam Chair. I think that uh, what's being proposed here is indeed reasonable. The variances are minor. There's a lot of um, uh, 
redevelopment or refreshing on this street. And I don't think what is being proposed is out of character. And I would like to bring a motion to approve the application subject to forestry condition number one and uh, planning condition tying it to plan A001 and A201. Okay, so the motion is moved by Ms. Hayes to approve with the conditions as outlined by her. Do I have a seconder? Mr. Reed, all in favor? That carries unanimously. Item number 38, 1120 Ossington Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, revised floor plans and elevations, six photographs of trees on the subject property, covering letter from the agent, as well as a tree preservation plan from the agent, parking study prepared by Next Trans Consulting, presentation materials from um, the agent and uh, I'm sorry, I already said that. It's, sorry, tree preservation plan. Uh, email correspondence from transportation. Um, they are. Uh, they seem to be okay with the parking and loading supply. And planning has conditions in their October 26th report. And I am showing um, one speaker, the agent, and then also somebody in support. Do we have both? That is correct, we have both, and we actually have one other speaker on the line, Albion Ramizi. Albion Ramizi, do you know if that person's in support or, or opposed? They're in opposition. Okay, thanks. Uh, Ms. Craig, you are unmuted. Great, um, if we could pull up the presentation materials. Can you identify yourself for the record, please, before you start your five minutes? Yep. Uh, thank you, Chair and Committee. I'm Sarah Craig. I'm the Entitlement Director at Our House, the Mass Timber Development Company, representing the applicant and owner um, for the variance proposal at 1120 Ossington. Okay. Chair, may I ask one question before the applicant starts? Sure. Um, from reading the material, I, I understand you might be making an amendment to variance number three with respect to the outdoor amenity space. It's no longer going to be zero. Did I read that correctly? And if so, could you tell us what it might be? Correct. Uh, so with discussions with uh, community planning and housing policies staff, uh, we have put, re submitted the revised ground floor plan, which um, highlights the programmed ground floor amenity spaces that will be added through the next revisions of the site plan process. So are you amending that variance or is it staying as is? Uh, there was just a time limitation of us being able to amend the variance. We would be in support of uh, revising the variance to um, include these two spaces in the outdoor amenity space calculation. It was just a um, application timing. No, no, I understand. I, what I'm asking is if you're amending it now so that we would look at the amended application. Uh, yeah, we can support that amendment. Okay, so what is the amendment then exactly to number three? Um, so you, it's the minimum required indoor space is 92 meters squared um, actually you're asking for 27 point 27 meters square so correct sure. yeah as well as through you madam chair um there's no outdoor amenity space being provided currently no, so unless she decides to make a revision Yes, we are supportive in revising the variance to include the outdoor amenity space as illustrated on the outdoor amenity revised ground floor plans. In the variance response here, it says zero, but we will be amending to include, as outlined, the, I think it's uh, 27 uh, square meters, or sorry, no, it's... I think that's not that. correct. I think yeah, if I'm, you I'm, look at the... I'm oh. confused. Like, are, are we talking about variance number three? What variance are we talking about here? Yes. Uh, can I can I interject? If yeah. you look at the drawings S zero zero three, the area has been labeled and calculated. If yes. you uh, look at S zero zero three, it's a revised one floor plan. Yeah, yeah there. And then on, on, on that's the, the chart yeah. there is two areas that if you add those two to, together, it's thirty two point two two. It's not 
It's not 27, it's uh, 32.2 yep. to be. Through you, Madam Chair, 27 would be the indoor amenity space. Right. And then what the applicant is now stating is that 32.22 square meters would be outdoor amenity space. Okay, so then it would read, in this case, 27 square meters of indoor amenity space is provided, and then it would become 32.2 meters square? 32.22. 32.22 meters square outdoor. Okay. And and if Sarah could confirm that we are correct, then we yep, can make that that a revision correct. to variance number three. Yes, that's a correct. Okay. Um, does that an answer your question, Joanne, then? Uh, I'll go. Yes, I, ju I just thought if it was going to get changed it before. Yeah, the... no, thanks yeah. for bringing that up. Um, okay, Sarah, can you do a presentation starting now then? And after that, we'll have the opposition speaker uh, and the support speaker come sure. on. Sure. If we could just scroll down um, to the existing on site. Uh, so currently on site, there's an existing renovated church, which includes 20 affordable housing rental units, six, six staff parking spots, and 12 exterior bicycle parking spaces. Uh, the site plan proposal currently under review includes a three-story building addition to the existing structure, which will provide 25 new permanent affordable rental units, which has received funding through the CMHC Rapid Housing Initiative. Uh, we'd like to thank city staff who we, we worked with closely in the site plan application and continue to incorporate their suggestions. Uh, community planning has submitted a staff report stating they do not have concerns with the proposed variances and the applicant supports the planning staff recommendations that will be integrated into the site plan application submissions. If we can scroll down. Uh, again, scroll down. Uh, the variance proposals for discussion in regard uh, to the application are summarized here, and I'm going to take the remainder of my time to walk through each variance and provide context. Uh, next slide. The permitted maximum building depth required a variance due to the narrow nature of the site. The proposed variance is minor in nature and uh, suits the context of the existing structure on site and appropriate for the site configuration. The proposed depth at 24.8 meters mirrors the existing structure on site which includes a depth of 21.3 meters next slide the proposed floor space index is 1.4 times the area of the lot and is minor in nature with the current fsi on site being an index of 0 0.8 the proposal aligns with the gradual and gentle density intent of the official plan and aligns with the adjacent neighborhood height and streetscape character uh, the proposed indoor amenity space, which we just discussed, although is less than the required as of right, will be an improved space with greater access to all tenants and include improved accessibility. Community planning and housing policy staff has included recommendations on suggested improvements to the indoor amenity space and an increase in the programmed outdoor amenity space area. The applicant has agreed to integrate these recommendations in the site plan application. Next slide. The proposed front yard setback is 3.7 meters, a minor variance in relation to the zoning bylaw allowance of 4.9. Through discussion with planning staff, the front yard setback was proposed to be aligned with the adjacent south property setback and has been integrated in the site plan accordingly. The proposed yard, rear yard setback is 3.75 meters, a minor variance in relation to the zoning bylaw allowance of 7.5 meters and is similar in nature to the existing rear yard setback condition. Next slide. The proposed ancillary building will accommodate bicycle storage and enclosed waste storage. Exterior bicycle parking and waste storage currently exists on site. The condition of the structure is proposed to be improved and closed and will be required to meet urban design comments and approved by planning staff in the site plan application process. Next slide. The zoning bylaw separation distance between dwelling units of 11 meters is not feasible to accommodate due to the narrow nature of the site. The glazing on both existing and proposed new structures will be improved to ensure adequate privacy and light is maintained to units. Next slide. The proposed percentage of landscape is limited due to the infill nature of the development site. However, the proposed landscaped areas will support the streetscape presence of the new structure with emphasis on soft landscaping and vegetation fronting Ossington and offer a gathering outdoor amenity space to tenants and staff between the two structures. Next slide. 
The next three slides speak to the loading, vehicular, and bicycle parking proposal. The proposal is appropriate for the affordable housing nature of the development and the transient oriented nature of the site. Supporting materials in the form of a parking justification and loading study have been conducted to support the proposal. Transportation services have reviewed the site plan and minor variance application and have submitted a memo noting there are no objections to the proposed parking or loading supply. Additionally, on October 12, 2013, 2022, the Zoning Bylaw Parking Requirements Review was resolved, putting into force the updated Zoning Bylaw of 89 2022. Under this zoning amendment, parking minimums have re been replaced with parking maximums, which would support this variance approach. Uh, next slide. Or, or sorry, the, my, my closing comments would be that this three-story mass timber affordable rental development proposal will improve the neighborhood and supports the intent of the zoning bylaw and the official plan, which requires physical changes in established neighborhoods to be sensitive, gradual, and fit the existing physical character. The variance proposals were thoughtfully put forward with discussion and collaboration with city staff to consider prevailing heights, massing, scale, and dwelling type of nearby residential properties. Thank you for your time and consideration. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, we'll hold our questions till we hear from the speakers. Um, okay, do you have um, Ms. Adams? Yes, we do, and she's unmuted. Hi, Andrea. Yes, can you hear me? I can. If you could please state your name and address for the record and just let us know why you support this application. I'm Andrea Adams. Um, I am the executive director of St. Clair's that is located at 1120 Ossington Avenue. I also live in the neighborhood on Gladstone Avenue. Um, and uh, Madam Chair, I've worked at St. Clair's uh, for the, in various capacities for the last 20 years. St. Clair's is a stable charitable organization with an excellent track record for operating deeply affordable housing in a variety of downtown Toronto neighborhoods. Our buildings are well maintained and cared for as assets that are contributions to Toronto's affordable housing stock now and for future generations. We enjoy the respect and support of the City of Toronto and the federal government for our partnership in addressing the city's housing needs and their support for this project at 1120 Ossington in particular. The new units that are proposed for this building will be operated and maintained in the same way as the rest of our portfolio, as deeply affordable, safe, well-maintained housing for Toronto residents of today and future generations. Toronto is an evolving city with changing housing needs. Currently, it is experiencing a housing crisis of supply and affordability, which we are addressing both. To address this crisis, every neighborhood will need to absorb and embrace increased density as represented by this proposal. We believe that the requests we are making today are reasonable in order to allow for the gentle density that this project represents. We believe it helps to know that St. Clair's is not a new neighbor on the street. We have been operating 20 apartments on the same site for 11 years. The building is well maintained and our tenants have a low impact on the surrounding neighborhood. 1120 Ossington is a valuable and appropriate location for affordable housing because it is close to transit, services, health facilities, and affordable shopping. Dozens of Toronto residents have benefited from this safe and secure housing, and we, look, we are asking for the committee's support so that we can look forward to assisting more now and in the future. Um, it wasn't mentioned in the list of documents that you have in front of you, so I thought I should mention also that four letters of support have been submitted um, from neighborhood service agencies, including NAMI Res, Madison Community Services, Sistering, and FCJ Refugee Centre. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, can I, do we have any questions for the speaker actually, panel members? No, thanks very much. Do you have the second speaker? Yes, we do. Albion Ramizi is unmuted now. Hi, this is Albion Ramizi. I'm uh, on the opposition side. Uh, okay, uh, can you just give me your address for the record, please? 1120 Austin. Thanks. You have five minutes, sir, starting now. Okay, I see. Uh, yes. Okay, uh, first, uh, I want to thank you that you give me the opportunity to raise my voice here. Uh, I 
implore you to reconsider these variances as one of the, not even one of them is minor in nature. All of them are double what the bylaws are. Okay? And uh, so I'll please beg you to reconsider them because none of them is minor. This will affect the life of my family and my life investment that we have in that house. And uh, every word that Andrea said there is not true. This property that they have now, 1120 Austington, is not maintained, it's supposed to do. Uh, I'm a property manager for five years. You can search my name on the internet and I know how property maintains. These people never have, don't have a landscaper. Their garbage starts from my house and it goes three houses up the street. There is pests that lurk in the area, raccoons, uh, skunk, uh, there is uh, possums, rats, and these people say that they have their pets, pet, uh, pet people to remove these pets, but it never happens. Uh, so this is a big health issue for the neighborhood. Uh, as for Andrea, she says that there is health facilities. There is not even one health facility nearby where all these people, they don't have cars. I'm here now, they can't even have bicycles to park. They will need to have bus access to go to these health facilities. Uh, once, once this building is done, the zone there is a no, no standing parking area where cars cannot park and emergency vehicles will have trouble to park there to get the sick person or anything that happens in the building. Uh, second thing is that there is no position, it's only me because I'm the only one that knows about this public hearing today and I was notified by letter. There's no other neighbors that know about this. The posting was not done as by, as by uh, rules that were supposed to be, it was supposed to be posted 10 days before, before this hearing. The posting was done on 25th of October and where it's posted, it's between bushes and nobody can see it. Uh, and I, I wish one of you can drive there to see this. That's why there is not, but not even one person opposing it. And the last thing is that there's not one, not two, not three, but 15 windows on my backyard and on my patio. And I have two kids that I enjoy my patio. This is this will be an extreme privacy in, intrusion, you know. Also, the sky will be taken from my view. There is no more sky there. For 45 degrees from my house, there will be no more sky. It will be gone. When I bought this house, it was a church. It was a nice area. It was beautiful. But now things are changing so fast, and we have no voice to to oppose this. Of course, we need. We need affordable housing, but not to destroy my life. I wanted to cooperate with St. Clair Housing. Not even one word came from them. I said, please, let's sit down. You might buy my house. You'll have this big space where you can use for parking or building another 28 units. Not even one word from them. And I don't, it's not fair to a human being, as my human rights. I don't think this building should be done there at this position. And this is it. And I'm sorry for my language because English is not my first language. All right. Thank you very much for your input. Do you have any questions for this, sure. Mr. Clay? Yeah. Sure. So I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't catch the, pre, the most recent speaker's address. Um, I believe he's the right adjacent, 1120 Ossington. It's 1112. 1112, uh, sorry. 11, yeah, I thought I heard 20, and I thought maybe he's a resident of the current. No. So you're 1112. So you're imme you're the immediately south of, of this All right. development? All right. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the speaker? Seeing none. Um, okay, thank you very much, Mr. Aramitsi. Can I have uh, Ms. Craig back? Ms. Craig, you are unmuted. Okay, thank you. Can you please speak to the issues raised? No more than five minutes. Uh, yes, I, I believe uh, we had had correspondence with uh, the neighbor and there was um, not only a community consultation held for the adjacent 
neighbors prior to the submission of the Committee of Adjustment application, but an open house that was held at the address of 1120 um, Ossington to address uh, concerns of, of neighbors and tenants of this um, application moving forward that was above and beyond the statutory and regulatory uh, public consultation uh, requirements. Um, I understand that there are some uh, concerns of the tenancy group. However, uh, from the advocacy that uh, Andrea has completed at St. Clair's, um, they have a, a different perspective on their operations and, and group which is being served. Um, in terms of uh, privacy, uh, we have ensured that um, the glazing on the windows that are um, adjacent to that lot will ensure privacy is maintained and light is um, available to the units, and we will continue uh, to ensure that that is the case. Um, I don't think there was any other particular uh, question directed to me, but happy to take further questions from the committee. Okay, panel members, do you have any, Ms. Hayes? So I just want to understand the 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 um, the nature of the units. So from looking at the plans, the first four units seem to have a kitchenette and a bathroom. The units on the second and third floor, maybe some of the labels are missing, but can you describe? They don't seem to have kitchenettes, and they seem to have a sink and a shower, but no toilet in some of them or nothing and where uh, where are what's just what's the profile of the rooms sorry yeah i'm happy to explain further so yes this is a, a labeling error um that was presented from the architect here so the first floor illustrates um, a single bed um, a kitchenette and bearer free units uh, this will be replicated on the second and third floor however the units on the second and third floor will not be barrier free uh, but the fixturing finishes and fit outs will um, be replicated from the first floor designs. So they're all standalone self-contained units. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions, panel members? Mr. Clay? Oh, I have one other question. Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Speaking to the, um, just some of the concerns that the neighbor had stated there, uh, what is the on-site staffing situation or maintenance and staffing situation for these facilities? Uh, there is an on-site property management um, representative that is um, provided by St. Clair's. Uh, they are uh, tasked with the responsibility of ensuring that the waste collection is stored and enclosed within the enclosed area as um, proposed and will move the waste uh, to collection on curbside pickup and uh, return um, after pickup is closed. Um, in terms of the security or other operations of St. Clair's, I would I would defer that response um, to Andrew, the executive director, as I'm not uh, informed of the details day to day on how that is staffed. Thank you. Um, I think, Yim, before I go, I come to you, Larry had a question. Yeah, just a quick one. I, I totally appreciate it. It's affordable housing, affordable rental, uh, so the units are small um, and self-contained. But what's do you have a sense of what the average square footage? I know you've got square meters, and you'll have to forgive me. I'm a bit of a Luddite on math. Uh, you, uh, roughly what the square footage of that would be? Um. It's about 140 to 145 square feet. Um, these are meant to support a population that is recently ho not housed. Um, and so in this uh, application to CMHC, uh, unit yield was the priority of St. Clair's and um, housing um, of this nature is common and preferred for this tenant group and reflects what has been done on successful applications at 25 Leonard, as well as the renovated units uh, that are the studio and one bedroom size within the um, existing uh, structure. Yeah, that's fine. I, I think that's 140, 150, that's kind of standard for these kinds of facilities. We 
sadly have seen applications uh, that have units that are considerably less than that. Thank you, though. Um, Ms. Chen? Oh, yes, a quick question. Uh, you have mentioned that, that uh, on the south elevation, there the, uh, those windows to minimize the overlook of privacy, uh, the impact on the property on the south. You you mentioned uh, the what what's what the what's the material for the windows on the south uh, elevation? Not this one. There, this so one. So what we have and used in the, the past, the, the the glazing details are are not illustrated in this site plan application at this uh, stage. But what we have used are these are um, windows for access of light rather than views, and so we've used glazed windows in this instance that are more opaque or have some treatment to ensure privacy but allow light um, because light is um, critical in these smaller units to have a greater livability, and so that's why we have included windows um, on this side. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, if there are no further questions, uh, let's take it into committee then. Mr. Clay. Uh, sure, I'm happy to sort of start this one, Chair. Um, this is a, a laudable project. Um, in an area that I think um, can uh, very capably sustain. It's close to Geary, it's close to DuPont. Uh, it is a short bus ride to Bloor and uh, is well serviced by transit. Um, I was initially concerned about, uh, not about parking, but more about the number of bike uh, storage spaces, but it sounds like they have a plan to um, allow for uh, storage of bikes in an outdoor uh, 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 a rebuilt outdoor amenity space, which uh, or storage space, which I think is good. Um, these are uh, units that are supported by the federal government through a grant program. They are run by an advocacy agency. Um, it's in a great location. The height, uh, I don't think, is offensive. It's, it matches what's already current there. And frankly, across the street, there is a similar. Uh, building of town of stacked towns, which is either the same height or perhaps even higher. Um, my view would be that this is neighborhood can quite capably sustain uh, this application. I think it's being designed fairly sensitively. I, I know this company, then they do um, uh, timber builds, which uh, is environmentally more sustainable. Um, I think this is a, a uh, and it's gone through a number of processes with planning staff and housing staff. So uh, in my view, it's a supportable application. Okay, any other comments? If not, go on. did you want to move a motion? Sure, I'm happy to move, um, I'm happy to move approval uh, of this application uh, subject to the planning conditions contained in their report dated October 26th. And it's as amended with variance number three. Uh, the outdoor amenity space is 32.22 meters square. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Joanne, did you want to add something? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Gary, would you consider a, 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 Hang on, Yim. Yim, one second. Joanne? Would you consider a friendly amendment? I know that it's been spoken that it would be considered as part of site plan, but the windows that are on the south side of this building uh, overlooking the neighbor's property, can we put in a condition that they be opaque? Sure. Uh, I ask. Sorry, I do not think it's opaque. They said that it will let light well, in, or or but not vision. Yeah. So, no, so it's maybe obscure. Best? Okay. So, yeah, so whatever so the what best they, language is. What would the language be to use then for windows that let light in but don't allow you to look out? So I, I think there, before we go many, too far on this, maybe a contrary view. I mean, I get the overlook issue, but on the other hand, these are very small units. Um, and with one window in each one, I'm not too sure uh, livability of living in a small unit with one window that you can't look out of is a 
really great place to live. I mean, I, I, I take your point about Overlook. Joanne, you're uh, muted. Sorry, I'll unmute myself again. I don't think the, there is windows in the front of the build uh, the units, I believe, Larry, in the court fronting on the courtyard. I think these are the windows that are in the bathrooms. Oh, fair enough. If these are, if this isn't like the principal view, you no, know. No, I, I don't believe, no. I think these are the windows that probably aren't going to be overlooked, but just in recognition of the concerns by the immediate neighbor and, and the, you know, the depth of the building and the closeness and the openings that are closer to the property line where windows are you are not usually permitted between two spaces that are that close. I just thought in those, I think from looking at the plans, it's the bathroom windows and there are windows at the front of each unit in the living room sort of bedroom area. So it wouldn't be the only source of light, but okay. just in terms of some protection to the homeowner um, immediately to the south. That was my yeah. only thought. Yeah, fair point. And uh, if that if it is just the bathroom windows, I'm I'm fine with that. Can why we? Don't I, why don't I confirm with? Yeah, can we applicant? confirm that, please? Yeah. yeah. Um, Sarah, you you've been listening. So can you confirm that the windows on the south side are in fact bathroom windows, and perhaps tell us what we should call them? Opaque, or is there a different term that would be more appropriate? Uh, they are not bathroom windows. However, they are a secondary window. There are primary windows at the front uh, looking into the courtyard. Uh, there is um, a concern for the ones that are facing the other units that not both could be glazed on either side for the separation distance variance. But uh, we can, w we would support a variance that speaks to glazing treatments that um, encourages privacy but in, still maintains light. We've done um, instances where there are um, Claire Story high windows, so it's above the line of sight of a person in the room but allows light and transparency through the window itself, so it's a higher form window or glazing treatments on the glass itself. Um, we just have not detailed those yet at the site plan application stage. Um, so okay, I think we're just looking for appropriate wording. Um, if we were to put a condition in them for um, glazing treatments um, to encourage light penetration um, but ensure privacy on the south side windows. Does that work for you? Yeah, that seems appropriate. Okay. Great. All right. So, um, so that motion then with that condition as amended, variance number three, uh, 32.22 meters square and planning's condition in the 26th of October report is moved by Mr. Clay. Do I, and Ms. Chen seconds. All in favor? Okay, that carries unanimously. Chair, could we have five minutes? Yeah, I was gonna, actually going to about to ask you if you want to do the last one in this time slot and then take a break, but we can do it now. So let's come, it's 4.47, let's come back at uh, 4.55. That's eight minutes, is that okay? Thank you, Madam right. Chair. Thanks.
Sabrina, are we okay to start? Yes, we can start. You guys hear me? Through you, Madam Chair, yes, we can start. Okay, great. Um, item number 39, 63 Elderwood Drive. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Forestry is asking for conditions one and two and correspondence in opposition from 225, uh, which is adjacent. <coughs> I am showing four speakers, including the agent. Do we have everybody? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, can I have the agent, please? He's unmuted. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? I can. Good afternoon to you. Um, if you can just state your name for the record, and then you have five minutes to do a presentation, please. Good. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Giorgio Robles. I present the file in front of us today at 63 Elderwood Drive. We have in front of us a um, number of Sorry, Chair, may I, may I just ask one point of clarification before yes. we start? Yes. And, it's, yes. and it may be just me. Yes. But variance number six and number seven. Yes. Um, I was confused because they're both for side yard setbacks, but they have different starting amounts, like minimum side yard setback is 1.2. The other one says three meters. Is there something missing from those descriptions? I, I believe uh, to you, Mr. Chair. And they both say east, uh, and they both have different numbers of what you're asking for, but they both say east lot line. All right, correct. To you, Madam Chair, I believe the uh, the two definitions of the um, of the requirements is basically with lot frontages. The first one, uh, the first one is requesting to the um, the the minimum size at one point two meter, where the required minimum lot frontage is twelve meters. Okay, to less than fifteen meters. So again. The minimum required, it's, there's actually just one factor here, it's between 12 and 15 meters is the frontage itself that falls in that category. The, the minimum required is 1.2, we're asking for 0.3, which is a foot. Okay, okay, I see it's different sections of the bylaw, but from a reading, just from a straight reading, it was like, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. Okay, thank you, thank okay. you. Okay, thanks, go ahead. Is there anything you need on the screen before you start? No, Madam Chair, thank you. I mean, I, I'll go through each individual variances and, and understand the merits of it, how it's uh, how it's sort of applied in our proposal. Um, first and foremost, um, do you understand that it's, it's a corner lot, therefore it's a little more difficult to work with. Uh, being, a, being a flanking side yard setback, again, taking up a lot of, sort of giving up a lot of real estate to actually work with an interior core design of a residence that permits us to work more fluidly with the design matters. But a couple of things here that we are sort of working 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 against us has sort of you know concluded where we have where we are here today. First and foremost, uh, the the homeowner has um, talked to both the adjacent neighbor on the uh, on the Elderwood, which is number number sixty one, which is prote particularly the, uh, the our east side yard setback, and of course at two twenty five, which I believe is is a, is a speaker today at two twenty five, which is the behind us in the rear yard, which is the key lot. So first and foremost, we'll, I'll start with the overall uh, building height. Uh, the proposed we height 7.2. We are proposing eight meters. Uh, again, if we actually look at the front elevation as, a, as, as merits of the application, the average, average height of our roof line is actually 7.29. The reason why we're, we're asking for eight is for more of artificial signatures. This being a modern design, um, again, not having any sort of um, conventional roof lines, we really we need to do some sort of character and by doing that, we sort of we sort of uh, elevate the uh, the roof lines, the parapets, at different heights, so create some more character. So again, that eight that eight meter that we're asking for is only truly in the front section of the uh, of uh, of the uh, of the entrance over the side entrance, which is generally is the side entrance, just to create character. But the overall flanking side yard roof line, which is the majority roof line, is actually at seven point two nine. Um, the second variance is. Uh, Maximum building length. Our true, our true building length is required is, is 18 meters. Our true building length above ground, above ground is 17.63 uh, under the 18 meters. But below ground, because uh, we're excavating under the rear yard covered loggia, 
is 20.83. 20, 20 again, I believe that's a technical reading because it's underground. No one really visually sees that. But again, having such a small lot, we're trying to maximize areas and space for the family, uh, which is growing, by the way. That's the third variance is maximum building, maximum building, building depth. Again, in that area there above ground, where the requirement is 19, 19 meters, we're proposing 19.28. Again, minor in nature and in all characteristics. Our GFA or FSI is pretty well self-explanatory. We're not really asking a lot. We're only for 10% more than and the bylaw requires. 65% 65 it requires. We're asking for 75. Minor in nature, and it's been duplicated in the areas throughout the general, general region and the general community around us. Number five is the maximum required uh, front yard setback. Um, or 7.35 meters required, we're proposing 5.8. Again, if you actually look at the, our, our site plan, our 5.8 is actually proposed at the front yard sort of bump out wing wall, more and more of an artificial signature point. Our garage is set back a little further, about a foot more. And uh, our front wall, our main wall of our den area is 6.74. So I would say, I mean, we still don't comply with the requirements, but again, we sort of jog the building back and forth to make it a little more interesting. We are asking, but again, we are restricted with a rear yard setback, which are in conjunction with an alpha variance number seven and eight and accordingly. Um, the flanking side yard setback number variance number seven, uh, oh, sorry, variance number six, the east side yard setback. Again, we have spoken to the homeowner as far as a proposal. Understand and recognize the existing dwelling that's there right now, the two story. Their, their side yard setback is actually zero up against the rear and a maximum of 1.09. We spoke to the neighbor about this thing here and we asked him to sort of, you know, understand and recognize what we're doing it. We're asking him because of the build, because of the building width um, require restrictions. We're, we're asking for 0.3 along uh, the closest points and 1.2 meters where we have unprotected openings as far as windows glazing. So again, I think we're doing something a little more equal to as far as streetscape uh, characteristics, but I think it helps us in our design as well, try to maximize interior flow and requirements. Um, variance number seven is the requirement of, no, that is, that is, that is that, that's the side yard, I believe. So hold on just a second, I'm a lot on this requirement of the side yard. Oh, sorry, yes. Variance number seven is re requesting the flanking side yard. Again, the requirement is three meters. Again, given the nature of the lot width and the frontage, restrictively we're sort of had to sort of do our best we can so we are re requesting a 1.83 meter at the furthest point, the backyard, and generally we're just pushing further and further inwards, increasing our setbacks to an average of 2.4 meters. So we're asking for relief in a, in a general scale of about 0.78 meters of relief at, 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 the, at the average points. But we are asking for that 1.83 at, at a very small margin. Variance number eight is the minimum required rear yard setback. A requirement is 7.81, where I know this we're asking for 7.71 at difference of four inches. Um, and that's the closest point from our building face to our rear yard setback. Again, minor in nature. And of course, variance number nine is the platform itself, which is the rear yard covered loggia, which again, it's conjunction with the uh, under uh, building depth or building, uh, uh, I think it's depth again at uh, length, sorry, length at, tw at uh, 20.83. We're asking for an encroachment of point, uh, point zero 0.03. So therefore, I mean, we're asking for a small, small area there. But then again, it's it is an open, open patio, open covered. It's a covered area, but it's strictly there's no wall. There's more of a, a covered patio area to entertain. So there's no really physical wall that we're encroaching that much closer. Hello, Giorgio. Um, please make your final comments as you yeah, run over Thank the so five much. minutes. Thank you. Again, it's just a number of variances. So again, I I believe by us being to our neighbors and having their support and the number of variances, I think are all minor in nature. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, all right, can I have uh, the first speaker as per the list, please? Mr. Bogash. Hey, uh, my name is Howard Bogash and I live at 225 Richview Avenue. And uh, I, I, I don't uh, sort of necessarily say I'm in opposition to this, but I am seeking some clarification on a number of issues. Um, we're looking at uh, 10 variances to the zoning bylaw, which in themselves may not be significant, but when you add them together, this is a significant 
encroachment on the bylaw. And particularly, I'm concerned about the encroachment into our home, which is at 225 uh, Richview. In terms of the patio and the linnae that's coming out there, my concerns regard how close that's going to be to, to my home, to my front door. Uh, that, uh, you know, there's no mention of, of privacy, there's no mention of, of, of proper fencing or, or uh, separation, therefore, for both uh, sound. It also comes to where we have a feature window which faces right into that backyard. So I'd like to at least have some answers uh, provided as to uh, uh, what can be done in regard to this. Uh, as I said earlier, I think a number of the variances are minor, but in totality, they become more significant. So I raise that as my concerns and would be looking forward for some discussion. Thank you, sir. Uh, panel members, any questions of the speaker? No, seeing none. Thank you. Uh, do you have Mr. Farovitz? He was on the line earlier, but he has since dropped off. I'm in the process of trying to call him in the call, but uh, we do have the next speaker on the line. Great, thanks. Mr. Rendell, you can go ahead. Hi, Ms. Mr. Rendell. Hello. Yes. Um, Hello, this is uh, Mark Harley. Rendell. This, this is not my application. I'm on 69 Elderwood. Are yeah, I know. Here? Like you're listed actually in support of this. So I'll just remove your name from here. I saw your name at. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks. Okay, I did hear Harley. Are you there? Yes, he is on the line. Okay. Yeah, thanks. I will. I got kicked off and now I'm back and I, I guess I missed the, the first few minutes un, unfortunately but uh, I basically want, just wanted to voice my, my I guess minor concern because of, of the you know there's like a dozen just 10 variances here and the ones I'm concerned about were all, that was actually first question is there was a two variances that look like the same to me this was um, number six and number seven I, and I they seem yeah. like the same, but they're, yeah. they're different numbers. They're different, and actually the member asked that question in the beginning, and, you know, we're not I apologize. examiners, but they are two different bylaws, so the measurements are taken in different ways, so the zoning examiner identified those. So, okay, so they ask you, so, so but it's a straight line, so that's what I don't understand. Like, why is there two different numbers? Yeah, it's a bit confusing, but we'll ask the applicant to explain it again. But um, I, again, I'm not a zoning examiner, so I'm not. I, right. I, I don't. I can't answer that. I don't think any of us can. But it's got to do with oh. the way the the bylaws are worded. For the okay, and I guess, and, and and I was also number ten. I was just trying to get my head around what exactly this was. Like, is this a deck? Uh, a logia. Yeah, it's kind of um, like an open sort of hallway. You know, like you see sometimes in, in older style buildings, it has like kind of these arched openings and you can walk under it. I think it's more that idea, but we can have the agent elaborate on that also. Yeah, and I just want to make, I just want, and it says no higher than the first floor. So I guess my, my concern was like, if this was a deck, was this deck going to be above the, like well above the fence and, and they're just having like, a, you know, be a, a bit of a privacy issue. I, I, I'm just, I'm just referring to. Yeah. Not assuming well, I, it's a deck, which I really don't understand what it is in the first place. No, I don't believe it's a deck, but we'll have the, uh, maybe the agent can confirm the way I read it was it's sort of a, a walkway that's open, but sort of covered. Okay. Okay, that, that would be helpful if you can explain what that is. And then just lastly, in terms of like, they're asking for like a variance. So I guess the, 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 the I guess their house is going to be built closer to the, to the property line. Is that, is that what it is basically? Um, yeah, again, we'll have the agent elaborate on, on that. So you okay. want an idea of Great. how close to you it's going to be? Sure, I'll be quiet now. No, no, okay. you're good. Is there anything else? No, that's it. Thank you so much. Okay. Panel members, do you have any questions of the speaker? Okay. Um, 
Mm, so just to staff, so the, the Martin Rendell uh, was just uh, an error. There isn't another person that should be there under the address that's listed here. Just want to make sure. Sabrina? Through you, Madam Chair, that's correct. Yeah, okay. All right, Mr. Lolos, are you there? Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair. Um, can you please speak to the issues that raised by the neighbors? So explain more what the Logia is and, um, you know, whether there's going to be oversight issues and, and all the other things that were raised. If you can speak to those only, you have five minutes. Yes. Um, it's generally, uh, it's, it's a, uh, that's just, just look, look at it this way. That's just, it's a, the open decking with a roof over it. That's what it is, generally speaking. It's a deck system. At, with a roof over it, therefore you can enjoy it a little more than just on a sunny day. It's rainy, you can still enjoy it there and so forth. Uh, just basically covered outdoor, in, uh, covered outdoor educating area, like a low gym. Um, again, um, we 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 are we could have put a balcony above it on the sun and off the second floor off the master, but we we felt not because of privacy issues because we are closer to the, to the flanking rear yard, which is our key lot neighbor. We just thought that was unnecessary. We could have, by by the by the uh, nature of the bylaw, we could have put a balcony there within four square meters, but we decided not to. Again, more of a privacy issue. Um, I believe one of the, some of the concerns that the neighbor brought to, uh, to, to the, the panel's committee, uh, members of the 325, as far as privacy issue, I believe the homeowner and the current homeowner and the neighbor had a discussion, and I'm, my understanding was from my, the discussion that they had is, the homeowner will do whatever is necessary to create privacy back again. I mean, if he has to do has cedar hedges and so forth. But again, some of like that is not committees, I would say, to, to put on record and so forth. It's because among the neighbors, the homeowner is more than willing to cooperate with the neighbors. Again, the neighbors and they discussed it and so forth. And he has no objections, no refusal of this working with them. No. Now, I did understand some of the questions of the other resident that came into the equation as far as side yards and uh, what address is he? I don't understand how I could I could address some of the questions, but again, is he my next door neighbor? Is he? I didn't I get the address. Um, sixty one. So yeah. Um, but having said that, I yes. think his question, if you can just explain the the two. I know you sort of we talked about it earlier, but maybe in layman's term, explain that he can have a more of a visual of the side yard setback requirements yeah of six and seven because that was the question because the variance item, is item six and six and seven I believe it's six and seven the the one that miss hayes asked you about with under the two different zoning bylaws he just found yes. it confusing well, i think i think miss hayes asked me mr mr let me say hayes for the west the uh the uh the side yard setback of um, 1.2 meters where the required minimum frontage is between 12 meters and 15 meters so our frontage right now our frontage is actually 12.19 so we follow we fall in that category so therefore our minimum required side yard setback under that category is 1.2 meters we're proposing 0.3 meters at the closest points and 1.2 meters where it's step back so we have window areas for glazing for natural ventilation and lights for principal bedrooms like dining room and bedrooms above. So any other any other any wall that's less than 1.2 meters, there is no windows for no so there's all this the privacy matters are uh, obsolete right now, but there's no there's privacy because there's solid walls. Uh, and again it's pretty well between 12 and 15 meters where that variance comes into play. The flanking side yard setback, which is number uh, number uh, seven, is it's a generally it's a three meter setback on the flanking side yards, and we're asking for one point eight three. There really is no definition about it. It's pretty clear. I hope I can assist or assist it. Okay. Um, anything else? Um, otherwise, Miss Hayes has a question. Yes. I was just going to ask, just um, uh, just further to that. I think. Number 61 had spoken to was the house getting closer to his house? So, if you could answer that, so the abutting neighbor our, at no, 61. Our, 61, our neighbor next to his side yards. Again, um, the homeowner had a discussion with him at the time of a discussion. There really, really was no opposition, he was in favor. Um, we he expressed what what we did on plans, the side setbacks, and we believe that based on what he had originally. On the existing dwelling itself being keeping in line with characteristics of the neighborhood he, the existing building was closer to the lot lines that we are projecting in now 
And again, it's strictly got to do with our overall volume of width that we just don't have to design accordingly. No, I'm, I'm almost, just asking you directly whether or not, just an, a, a short answer to the question yeah. for the gentleman, is the building, um, other than the current build, going to be in any parts closer to the lot line than it currently is? I think that was his question. No, no, the existing is closer. We're further away by three, by a foot. Because if you look at the existing site plan, the existing survey, there's a rear portion that's right on the lot line of the existing dwelling. Okay, but there's some side parts on that side that you're closer to the lot yes. line. The yes, the that, balance that, is one. The balance is one point zero nine. Yes, just I, over three. I feet. think the gentleman was just asking for a straight answer. So Sorry. thank you. Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions, panel members? Okay. Let's take it into committee then. Mr. Reed, I can start. I I think this is a it's a big development, a big house, but I think the variances are are quite minor, um, and uh, and I think defensible. I think supportable. I think the the fact that this is located on a on a corner lot um, kind of allows it to spread its density out a bit more and um, and have two aspects, and I I think that helps, and the. the I was originally a little concerned about the depth and the length, but I think that's been managed well. So unless my colleagues have anything else to add, I'd like to move a motion to approve the application subject to urban forestry condition one and two. Okay, do I have a seconder for that? Ms. Hayes, did you want to add something? Peter, would you consider a friendly amendment just because of the, um, I think it's what makes the new build a little interesting is the undulating side yards that it could be tied to the site plan? That's a great idea. Yeah, let's add that, please. Okay, um, so the motion then is to approve the application with a condition to tie it to the site plan, as well as forestry one and two, moved by Mr. Reed, seconded by Ms. Chan. All in favor? That carries. Okay, uh, we're now, change files here. Okay. Um, we're now going to item number 40, 108 Heath Street West. We have before us a copy of the draft plan of survey, copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, presentation materials from the agent. We have um, staff report from engineering asking for condition, uh, standard consent conditions and forestry number three on parts one and two. Um, and I just have the agent showing as a speaker here. That is correct. She's on the line and she's unmuted. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, members, Ida Evangelista, on behalf of the owners of 108 Heath Street West. Okay. Would you like me to go through everything or do you want no, to I ask don't... me questions? Yeah, we'll go with questions. You're aware of the forestry and engineering conditions? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, we've worked with all departments, and as you can see, there's not, nothing from planning, engineering, construction services we're okay with. Forestry we're good with. Transportation is, has no objections to the application. Okay, let me see if there are any questions. Panel members, any questions for Ms. Evangelista? Um, Ida, I'm not seeing any questions. We're ready to take it into committee for a decision. Anything you want to add that's not in the materials we have? Uh, Madam Chair, members, uh, I believe um, through my submission, uh, pages uh, two to seven, I've outlined all the variances, um, the length, the depth relates to the average of the front yard setback to the length of the, to the rear wall of the basement. Um, other than that, uh, you know, this is a quite an eclectic area with um, mid-rise, high-rise, um, triplexes, three stories. Uh, so what we're proposing is very characteristic to even to what is exactly right next door to us. Okay. Um, did you have a question, Ms. Hayes? Uh, just, I, um, there is no length variance, is there? We... 
Um, through you, Madam Chair, um, uh, Member Hayes, we do have a length variant, and that's the length that you have in front of you is due to the length of the basement. Because what okay, we've which, done is um, we've excavated which underneath I didn't the. See um, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Deck. I had a question be when mm -hmm. I was reviewing it because I didn't see, a, I saw a depth variance noted, but I didn't see a length variance in the list of variances. So that's why. I, had the question. Right, and just bear with me for one second. That's on part two. Like in the description of the variances, I didn't That's... I didn't see any um mm -hmm. length variances noted. Ida, part two is variance number seven, which um, is the depth variance. And the depth part, variance. And for part one, it would be variance number six. And, and this is, uh, I'm referring to the notice that was mailed out. Right. So we do have depth, we do not have length. But there is a length variance? Mm -hmm. There is a length variance required? It was not noted on the, I'm going to, um, to you, Madam Chair, uh, Sabrina, I don't, I didn't see it on the, hmm. so, check the zoning through you, Madam Chair. I it's almost just... like we've, we've, if we can step this down for a minute, we can check. I can just check the zoning uh, review that was submitted. We've looked at this so many times. Uh, I just thought I wasn't seeing it, so that's why I'm asking. No, I appreciate it very much. We've had many eyes on here. Through you, Madam Chair, I can confirm that after reviewing the zoning review, I, mm -hmm. I only see a depth mm -hmm. variance. I don't see a length variance. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Well, um, I no, mean, no if, if for some reason you need it, you'd have to come back to committee. I know. Yeah. Um, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Sabrina, uh, Madam Chair, can we step this down for a moment sure. so I can contact um, yeah, a staff that's member? Fine. Uh, staff, staff is, she's very good in, in reaching out rather quickly. Okay. Um, all right. I'll hold it down and I'll come back to it then. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, let's go to item number 41, 82 Borden Street. Uh, we have before us a copy of the draft plan of survey, a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, four photographs of trees. We have a covering letter from the agent, uh, email correspondence from transportation services. They did not uh, ask for any conditions. Engineering is asking for conditions and um, forestry uh, is asking for part uh, for I'm sorry condition number three on parts one two and three. All right uh, do I have the agent on the line and I'm showing here one two three four five speakers including one in support. Or I'm sorry, my mistake, I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm only showing the agent as a speaker. Are you there, Mr. Galbraith? Yes, he's on the line. Okay, thanks. Sean, you've been unmuted? Uh, sorry, yes. Uh, Sean Galbraith, planner here on behalf of the application. Uh, panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. Galbraith? No? 
Alrighty, I'm not seeing any questions. Is there anything you want to add that's not in the materials before we take it into committee to make a decision? No, just uh, just to note that Croft Street is a bit of a unique situation uh, as po uh, compared to typical lanes, and because it's it has full services already, and that's evident that engineering had uh, had no concerns and just their sort of standard conditions. Okay, let's take it into committee for a decision, panel members. Um, I'm not sure who had their hand up first, either you or Larry, so you guys can decide. I was looking at my sheet here. Uh, ladies, because Ladies first. <laughs> yes, okay. Because I, I have sort of a, a special feeling for this street because uh, I almost bought a house on this street a long time ago. Uh, it is a very, very uh, unusual street because it has to really have both garages and main house entrance on, this, on the street. So going through the, uh, the the years, there's a lot of uh, development on the street, and then it's turned it into a, almost like a uh, uh, just a major, um, a, a, a residential street rather than a laneway. So I think that this um, this proposal makes sense to do it because then naturally it will uh, it will it will improve the um, the uh, streetscape on the on the cross side. And I and also the variances when I look at them, they're quite minor, and I am um, I am in support of this uh, application. Okay. Um. Anyone else? No. Do you want to move a motion then, Yim? Okay. I will move a, a motion for um forty forty one a. Uh, subject to the standard surface um, as, as regulations and uh, 41B and 41C subject to forestry condition num uh, number three. Okay, and engineering conditions. Um, engineering in condition is yeah. for 41A. It doesn't matter, it's a surface. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah the engineering conditions for um, as listed in the August 18th report and then standard consent. So, um, plus the forestry as outlined by um, by Ms. Chen. Uh, Sorry, through you, approved. Madam Chair, yep. uh, the, the conditions um, in the engineering staff report are related to the minor variance applications. So they're only for parts one, two, and three then? So there'll be the standard conditions for the consent, uh, but the mm -hmm. engineering conditions will be related to the minor variance applications. Okay. Plus the forestry. That's correct. Um, also on the minor variances. So that's moved by Ms. Chen. And do I have a seconder for that motion? Uh, Mr. Reed, all in favor? That carries unanimously. Okay. Item number 42. It's, sorry, I'm just looking at my sheets here. Something looks off. Sorry, through you, Madam Chair. Um, item number 43 uh, on the registered speakers list. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking that, yes. to thinking I'm going crazy here. <laughs> no, right? that I'm is missing, but it is, but it is missing. also Martin Rendell who will be speaking for both item 42 and item 43. Okay, so it's is it only um, Mr. Rendell then listed as a speaker for 43? Yes, that's correct. Okay, well, thanks for telling me because I was kind of thinking I'm, yeah, losing it here. But anyways, okay, thanks. Okay, um, item number 42, 10 Cuthbert Crescent. We have before us a copy of the draft plan of survey, a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, five photographs of trees on the subject property, covering letters from the agent. We have email correspondence from planning. They did not express any concerns. Uh, we have heritage asking for conditions, forestry uh, number three on parts one and two, engineering is asking for conditions and transportation um, was asking to refuse the parking variances on both parts. 
And we have support from number 54 Bell Size Drive, as well as residents from 115, 51, and 59 Cuthbert. Opposition from number 17, 6, 14 Cuthbert, and number 3 Tullis Drive. And it's on this one that I'm showing uh, five speakers listed in addition to the agent. Uh, do we have all of the speakers? No, we do not. We are missing Christopher Lim and Tom Lavery. Everyone else is here. Um, okay, yeah, I had Christopher, Christopher Lim is scratched out on my sheet. So Tom yes. Lavery? Just okay. Tom Lavery, yes. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Randall, are you there? Yes, I am. I've, I've just been unmuted. Thank you. Okay, if you can just identify yourself for the record and then you have five minutes to do a presentation and then we'll go to the speakers. It's Martin Rendell. I'm agent for the owners. My address is 35 Delburn Drive in Toronto. <clears throat> what what uh, you have before you today is three applications. There's one consent application to sever the lot into two fully compliant lots um, in accordance with the zoning bylaw, there are no variances for lot frontage or lot area. And the proposal is to build a semi detached dwelling on half of each semi on, on each lot. And the variances relate to the semi detached dwelling proposed for the lot. Um, I'm withdrawing one of the variances and it's variance number six. That's the variance for soft landscaping in the rear yard. In further discussions with uh, the owner and, and the designer, the architect, by removing some of the hardscape and the ancillary structures proposed um, will be compliant on the soft landscaping and that'll also improve uh, some other aspects of the site. So on both parts? Yes. Okay. Uh, in, in, in terms of my presentation, I'm going to refer to my letter, which has some diagrams and heads up to staff. Also, be referring to drawing A six o five, which is in the is the last one in the um, plans package. So, with respect to the um, yeah, and, and let's go. Keep, keep scrolling. Let's go to the, the yeah, that drawing there. Um, yeah. So this shows you the street view as well as sort of the uh, oblique view of the proposed semi on the uh, two proposed lots. And it gives you a, a context for it and also shows how, in my view, the building type as well as the massing, the height, uh, and other aspects of it are an appropriate fit for its context and, and the street. And an example of the type of new infill housing that's occurring in this neighborhood, which includes three-story infill dwellings being built. And a semi-detached dwelling is a permitted use under the zoning. So uh, the variants are sim relate, uh, I'll go through those now. Um, the height of the the buildings, it's 10.87 meters height. It's their three-story buildings uh, versus the nine meter maximum height. The additional height accommodates the third floor. There are no restrictions in this neighborhood about the number of stories. So three-story buildings exist and are permitted. If staff could now scroll back to my, my letter and that's just the, in terms of the, the depth variance, the, the depth variance applies only to the ground floor. And if staff scroll down a bit more, there's a side, there's a, a graphic that shows that. Yeah, this one here with the circles. Because Cuthbert is on an angle, the, The depth applies only to those tiny portions at the southwest corners of each uh, dwelling. 
that that exceed the depth and you can see the lines uh, that go through there depth is often considered together with building length and in this case the length of the each of the dwellings is only 16.24 meters which complies uh, so in my opinion the the building depth variance is simply a product of the configuration of the lot and, and the angle turning to the the floor space index the proposed floor space index is 0.84 and yeah let's go to this graphic here um, in sitting through a couple of the applications leading up to this um, not to write on any other applications but in areas that have a maximum 0.6 you've seen a number of applications that have exceeded that um, and today but what we have done here and I think the floor area and the massing and the FSI needs to be considered in the context of what measures are taken to address that massing on the site and the green arrows here show that what we've done is a common uh, technique in terms of the upper floors in this case the second and third floor having step backs to both reduce the massing reduce the visual prominence of, of the massing and and to provide um, again a, a mitigating kind of measure on the the floor space index hello Martin please um, give us your final comments have you gone over the five minutes sorry um, in terms of front yard landscaping, that's a product of uh, the front yard parking pad, which we've applied for because in Davisville Village, you can't have the zoning bylaw prohibits integral garages. Front yard parking is the only way to accommodate parking on the property. So I would recommend, in my opinion, the, the consent satisfies all of the requirements of the Planning Act. And I believe all of the variances have merit for the reasons I've outlined in my letter as well as my comments okay, now. Okay, thank you. You're at six minutes now, Randall. Thank I'm, you. I'm done. Okay, thanks very much. We'll have you back after I hear from the opposition. Um, can we go in order of um, the list, please? If, if you can give me Mr. Pfeffer. Yes, Jim Pfeiffer is unmuted. Oh, uh, hello. I'm Jim Pfeffer from 54 Belsize Drive. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, I'm not in opposition. I'm in support of this application. Uh, so my house is just around the corner from this. There's three streets that kind of meet at uh, sort of a point with the Crescents, uh, Belsize, Cuthbert and Tullis. So I'm the house right there at the corner of Tullis and Belsize. Um, so I did get the notice in the mail, so I'm within that uh, 60 meter uh, catchment area for the notices, so pretty close to this development, and of course it's very much in my neighborhood, so I'm, I'm quite interested. Uh, first about the severance, uh, you know, when I saw this proposal for severance, I was kind of uh, impressed. I took a look and I see that 10 Cuthbert Crescent is far and away the widest lot on this block and uh, personally I think particularly you know given all the talk we hear about housing these days I think why wouldn't you have two really attractive um, contextually appropriate houses for two families on this one lot where otherwise you might just have one so that I thought uh, definitely is appropriate and desirable development for this lot and for the neighborhood uh, something I see that others had noted, I know it's not really a matter before the committee, but uh, I did note that the plans do have walkouts at the front and the back of the basement, which is not, I understand, presently planned for a secondary suite, but I was impressed by the fact that I thought that that was very forward-thinking design, and I, I think it was good design, just like I think the house itself is good design. In terms of the length, I noted, as I think Mr. Rendell had said, that the length of the house itself is only 16.24 meters, whereas typically we plan for a 17 meter long house. And I was particularly impressed by the fact that the second and third stories are only 12.2 meters long. So I think this could really be classified not as a three story house, but really almost like a two and a half, because 
you know, that the second and the third stories are really, really reduced from the first floor footprint. And there's plenty of two and a half and three story buildings, including two of the houses immediately adjacent to this one. Uh, in terms of the FSI, I see the way the mass is deployed, I don't think that's a problem. I'd particularly note that this house does not have either a second floor or a third floor balcony at the back. So there isn't going to be any concern generated by overlook from a balcony into people's private backyard space, which I think could often be a concern with an as of right development. Similarly, you can see a balcony or, or a canopy back there. There isn't any of that. So I think this development itself is not impactful in that way. And I think in terms of shadowing as well, you could see an as of right development with eaves with much greater impact than what you see before you. Uh, the front yard parking, you know, I believe that in Davisville, integral front yard garages are not allowed. So, uh, and front yard pad parking, I think, is the prevalent condition in the neighborhood. I think seeing a development like this with only one parking space per house, where the whole house is not designed around parking and cars, you know, I think that's also forward thinking. I think it you know, both looks backward to the more typical vintage development of the neighborhood. It also looks forward to a time when cars are maybe not so much part of, you know, the way the things that we design our cities around. It's, it's very common in older houses. It's also very common in newer houses, such as just at the end of this street, at 89 Bellasides, you'll see a much newer house, only front par pad parking. So it's very much in keeping with the neighborhood. I understand that's what leads to the, uh, the front yard landscaping variants. Uh, so in short, you know, I think not only has this family designed an attractive house for themselves, they've done it so for another family. Uh, I think this represents good forward thinking development. And I know that the changes that they made to the rear yard have been to address the concerns of the neighbor after the notice went out. So I think the architects and the homeowners here have done everything right, and I certainly urge the committee to approve this application. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker panel members? Seeing none, uh, if I could have the second speaker, please. Yeah, the next speaker is going to be Tom. We were able to reach him. Oh, okay. Thanks. You can go ahead. Yeah, I try, I tried to log in at four o'clock, and all of a sudden at five 41, I got a phone call from WebEx saying that I'm now in the meeting. Is that correct? Yes, Tom, um, that is correct. The committee members hear a number of items in the afternoon, so we are now dealing with this item. So please, you will have five minutes to um, speak to the members and raise your concerns. Okay, so first of all, um, I don't consider these variances minor at all, and they really should be classified as major. And uh, my property actually borders some of this uh, proposed development lot. And so I actually border it. And so in regards to the point number one, I'm not gonna cite the uh, bylaw numbers, but point number one, uh, the height is nine meters uh, maximum. And this is uh, almost two meters above that. That's 20% over and above the bylaw requirements. And I notice on the first floor, the first, first floor ceilings are 10 feet ceilings. The second floor ceilings are nine feet. And the third floor are also nine feet. And um, if they were, even if they were reduced to eight foot ceilings, that would only save 1.22 meters. And it's still, 0.65 uh, meters above the height requirement. And so essentially, the only solution there would be to get rid of the third floor what's uh, totally. Um, point number two, the front and rear exterior walls, uh, they're asking for 10.06 meters versus seven meters, which is 44% above the city bylaw requirement. And essentially, there's no way around it. To, to meet the bylaw requirements, the only solution would be 
to um, get rid of the third floor. And so essentially I'm in favor of sticking to the bylaw requirements um, totally. The bylaw requirements are there for a certain reason and I think that would be appropriate in this case. Um, the depth of the building, point number three, the depth of the building, they're asking for 18.27 meters versus 17 allowed in the bylaw, and that's 7.5% greater than the bylaw, and I feel that it should be reduced back down to 17 meters. Um, the density is, um, I call it density, you guys call it the floor space index, is 40% above the bylaw, and uh, the solution would be to reduce the density. In regards to point number five, it's uh, too, too much hardscaping in the front yard, and that should be reduced. Um, in the rear yard, there is too much hardscaping in the rear yard. Uh, my property backs onto the property uh, of the said property, and because of the drainage and the natural slope of the land, um, because of the, all the additional hardscaping, my property, number five, Tullis Drive, and number three, Tullis Drive, would uh, be impacted by the excessive runoff of water from the property. And so my suggestion would be to remove the sauna in the shed, remove all the hardscaping in the backyard, hire a drainage engineer for a French drain type system with uh, a 2,000 liter or so capacity soaking pit. Um, in, in the front yard, the parking, the park, the, the parking space, um, there's no net gain as you will end up losing two street parking spaces anyway. And so you gain two on the property and you lose two on the street. So there's no net gain whatsoever. In addition, you're violating the, uh, the bylaws of the city. Um, so in addition, I feel the lot is too narrow to be severed into two lots with two houses. And point number two is, um, recently there was a 91 centimeter uh, tall shade tree removed from the property. And I don't see anywhere in the plans um, for any provision for a replacement large shade tree. All it's uh, indicated is just a few planters uh, here and there on the, on the front, two, two new properties. And so my summary essentially is basic, it's basically, it's too much density, too much density, too much density. It's too high, too wide, too deep, and too much concrete everywhere. Um, and there only should be one dwelling on the property, not two. And the proposed development is totally out of character for the neighborhood. And so that is my uh, statement that I would like to make to the Committee of Adjustment. Thank you, Tom. And can you state your full name and address? Tom Lavery. It's L-A-V as in Victor, R-I-H. And my address is number five, Tullis Drive, T U. L L I S drive. Thank you. Panel members, do you have any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, thank you very much. If we could move on to the next speaker, please. The next speaker is Barbara Vininsky Vin Millar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oops. 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 Hi, Barbara, do you have anything running in the background? Because we're yeah, getting she a really, has, she has quite an echo. I'm going to expel one of her devices. Go ahead, Great. Barbara. My name is Barbara Vaninsky Miller, and my husband and I have lived at 14 Cuthbert Crescent, the house to the north of the subject property, since 1984. We have raised our family here, and we regularly patronize shops and restaurants in our neighborhood. 10 Cuthbert Crescent is a legal duplex comprised of two two-bedroom apartments, and there is a studio apartment in the basement. There are three Toronto Hydro meters at the side of the house. 
Three families have lived in this house, so this development proposal does not contribute to intensification of housing opportunities in the neighbourhood, as Mr. Pfeffer suggested, that the applicants were very forward-thinking. We are not in favour of the plan to sever the property. During the past 10 years, three severances were approved in the neighbourhood on Cuthbert Glebe and Manor Road, all on lots with frontages wide enough to allow for the construction of two two-storey detached houses. Because the lot at 10 Cuthbert Crescent is not as wide as these other lots, in order to build two houses on the property, the applicants have had to apply to build two tall, narrow, three-storey semi-detached houses. Too much house for the existing lot, with mass and scale which do not fit the prevailing character of the neighbourhood. Although Mr. Pfeffer suggested that there were three-storey houses immediately adjacent to number 10, this is in fact not true. Number 8 is a semi-detached house where it, with a peaked roof where the third storey is an attic which is, has been converted into living space. And any other three-storey houses that he's referring to are all, also have peaked roofs, not flat roofs like this proposal, and they are all attic space which is living space. We do not consider the variances requested to be minor and they will have direct adverse impacts certainly on our property and on the other abutting properties to the south and the rear. Green space is a prized commodity in our city and Toronto's land use policy emphasizes preservation of green space to mitigate water drainage issues and reduce inflow into storm sewers. This proposal represents a significant loss of green space at both the front and the back on a lot which because of the shape of our street, has one of the largest combined front and back green space areas. The variance requested for 34% soft landscaping at the front, as opposed to the required 75% in the bylaw, is chiefly because of the request for construction of two parking pads. The significant loss of green space at both the front and the back of the house, due to the houses jutting back on the first floor, is not desirable for the neighbourhood. In my humble layperson's opinion, this development proposal for two tall narrow houses covering most of the lot has the potential to have a very significant impact on drainage issues on our property, the property to the south, and the ones to the rear on Tullis Drive which are at a lower elevation. This is definitely a concern in view of the impact of global warming on our environment now and in the future. There will be no boulevard space at the front of the houses because of the parking pads and therefore no space to replace the mature tree which is chopped down several months ago. Permanent structures at the front of the proposal to house garbage cans will be something new to our street. Although Mr. Pfeffer suggested that this is the widest lot on the block, and in fact it is the widest lot on the uh, east side, on the west side of the street because it is the only lot with a private parking um, driveway beside. Lots on the other side of Cuthbert Crescent are wider than this lot and in fact one of those lots was severed and was wide enough to allow for those two uh, detached houses. The mass and scale of the development proposal is egregious and not in keeping with the prevailing character of the neighbourhood. Most houses on surrounding streets when considering their height have peaked roofs. This proposal has a design with a flat roof and seeks a height of 10.87 metres I'm going to go to Imperial now, almost six feet higher than allowed and with the front and rear wall heights at least 10 feet higher than permitted in the bylaw. These tall narrow three-story houses because of their flat roof design will loom over the neighborhood and because of the way that they are staggered they will block the light to the windows on the south side of our house and I know that my neighbors of the eight will have a, a number eight will have a similar impact on the windows on the north side of their house. Although Mr. Pfeffer said that there is no shadowing issue, the letter of objection from CEDRA as well as their presentation tonight includes shadow study images which show the negative impact of the proposed houses on our house and on our front and back gardens. There will be no windows or doors on either side of the proposed houses. These large side walls without articulation will accentuate the height, mass and scale of the building. This is what we will see when we look out our windows or sit on our back deck. The abutting neighbours to the south will experience the same issue. There are very few houses in the immediate neighbourhood which have an FSI of 0.84 times the area of the lot, the variance requested by the applicants. This does not seem minor to us. FSI is a critical planning consideration designed to limit infill overbuilding. Infill overbuilding. The proposed severance and two tall, narrow, three-storey dwellings are not appropriate 
were desirable for our neighborhood, and we would ask that the application be refused. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions of the speaker? Seeing none, if we could go to the next speaker, please. Next speaker is Al Kivi. You are unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, could you just say something else just to make sure it was cutting out? Uh, yes, my name is Al Kivi. I live at 427 Belsize Drive. Alrighty, you're good to go. We'll start the clock now. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair and panel members uh, for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, my name is Al Kivi. I'm a board member of the South Eglinton Davisville Residents Association. RA, RA has been active for over 55 years assisting residents in matters of uh, land use planning. That's not me for 55 years, that's other people over a period of time. So sometimes it feels like 55 years. I have a lot of material to cover today. My plan is to spin through my eight page presentation, providing some highlights for each slide. I'm not sure if we can gear that up, but uh, I hope you have that little slide deck in front of you. Um, I, I should point out that there was one uh, statement of fact here that's incorrect. In, in, in the city of Toronto, in the broad city of Toronto, you need 25 feet lot, 25 foot lot in order to have an indigo garage. So that by itself would prevent this application or this applicant from actually having integral garages. The Davisville uh, Village bylaw is a little separate and different from that. Um, so if we can go to slide one, uh, uh, the, the, the indication here is, and you're very familiar with it, this is a severance and variance application. There are different rules, criteria for a, a consent application as, as different from a minor uh, variance, um, and and uh, we we have to look at those individually. The, the the key element from the relevant criteria relates to the dimensions, the shapes of the proposed lots. Even though these may be bylaw compliant, as Mr. Uh, Rendell indicates, that we really have to look at the lot fabric of 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 uh, of the broader neighborhood as we're considering whether this severance is appropriate or not. Next slide, please. So if, if we move to uh, slide two we, and look at the severance side of things, um, I, I've determined through uh, my, my calculation, and this is often what I've seen in, in other similar severance applications, you're, you're very much preoccupied with lot frontages. Uh, and the calculation of lot frontage, as you can see from the definition, can be calculated two ways. The most frequent way that it's looked at is to look at the, the lot width uh, using perpendicular calculation as someone might envisage the property looking from across the street. You, you do not typically consider the, the angular uh, calculation as being a true lot frontage. Uh, next slide, please. What, I've, uh, what I do very often when, when I appear at T-Lab is we very often focus on broader context neighborhoods and immediate context neighborhoods. You can see that the broader context neighborhood is quite large, 340 dwellings. We have over the period of the last 10 years had uh, three uh, severance applications. Uh, each of those were for uh, lots that were 50 foot wide. The severances were for semi-detached houses. Uh, so severances do take place, but typically on larger lots. Next slide, please. Uh, the next slide, slide four, shows a, a map of lot frontages in the in the broader area, and also in the in the in the immediate context area. Sometimes we call it the street block. Uh, according to the city data that's available to me, there are no lots that are smaller than 6.09 or six 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 meters. So this would, in a sense, if permitted, would be the smallest lot frontage in our broader context neighborhood. Next slide, please. Um, so, so if we, we summarize the, the, the looking at the severance application, we have a fail for this because it's failing because of the lot frontage. The lot frontage is not, does not reflect the characteristic of the broader neighborhood. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, after we look at, at the severance side of things, we look at the minor variance side of things. Um, I, I also use the available city data to look at the broad uh, aspect of um, 
uh, floor space index uh, uh, properties with with a floor space index of 0 0.84 are not common in this broad broader neighborhood and there are there are no there's only one instance and on, on on Cuthbert uh, uh, Crescent where, where we have a, a an FSI that exceeds what the application the applicant is proposing for two houses this is not one house this is two houses um, next slide please the, this is also data provided by uh, city data. They fly airplanes over the city and do LIDAR analysis. The LIDAR analysis says that there are no properties on this uh, media context that exceed 10.8 meters, which is what the applicant is proposing. Uh, next slide, please. So this application also fails the minor variance test uh, by virtue of, of the height of the property and the floor space index uh, uh, for it. Um, next slide. Uh, well, I, I, I do. I, I know I'm running out of time, so I'd let me just close here if I can. Um, the, the proposal fails, in my view, both the severance criteria test and the variance test, and I ask that the panel should refuse these applications. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Keevy. Panel members, any questions? Seeing none, thank you. Uh, if we could go to our final speaker. Mr. John Little, you are now unmuted. Um, I presume you're to me, John Little. Correct, yes. yes. I live just down the street from the, app, uh, from the applicants. Um, I, I, my submissions will be extremely short, uh, Madam Chair and members. I know you've had an extraordinarily long day. I'd forgotten uh, how long <laughs> your days are. Um, as I look at this, uh, it, it, and I thought that the prior um, submissions were very, very helpful. The, 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 one of your criteria, and I, and I know you hear this all the time, and you, it's inbred in you, it, that this has to be a minor variance. And and I'm talking now not about the severance, but about what's proposed to be built. Um, looking at um, the number of requests for variance here in itself is, I think, unusual. You would know it better than I. But in particular, both the height and the massing of the buildings is completely out of character with the neighborhood. And in my view, not even close to being what one could consider minor. And while I know from listening today, you have been um, generally very supportive of people's interest in expanding their houses, you, I think, have to look at two other factors. One, the neighbors, particularly the immediate neighbors, but also the neighborhood. And I'm speaking more, I guess, for the neighborhood, but. Uh, precedents are made and they're made here. So I would urge you to not treat this just as, oh, it's another application. This owner deserves to do whatever this owner wants. I think other interests uh, should be taken into account. And personally, I don't think that the criteria for obtaining um, th these um, variations which are being sought has been met under the legislation. Those are my submissions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Little. Any questions, panel members? Seeing none. Uh, Mr. Rendell. Yes, um, thank you. Uh, just very quickly, uh, some of the comments that have been made today and in letters deal with drainage onto it, other properties and, and that creating issues. Um, I can advise people that as part of the building permit process, the building department requires applicants to submit a grading plan that in fact demonstrates that um, there is no pooling or flooding of other properties and how drainage will be dealt with. So um, that's a built-in requirement of the city's process. In terms of the tree removed at the front, that was a city tree that was removed by the city, had nothing to do with uh, the owners of the property. In terms of green space, we've removed the variance for soft landscaping in the rear yard, which improves that. And as uh, Mr. Pepper noted, the landscaping variance in the front yard arises because of the front yard parking space, and it's a product of that. 
in terms of the neighbor's comment about the blank walls, um, at times neighbors complain when side walls have windows because of the view that those create. In any case, where these building or buildings are located fully complies with the zoning bylaw in terms of the setbacks. So whether there's windows or not, whether it's a semi-detached or something else, um, the footprint and the location of the building would be the same. The um, Mr. Kivy's comments, um, I appreciate that they uh, he, he relies on numbers and at, at the risk of paraphrasing some of his sentiments, um, if there isn't another six meter lot in the neighborhood, presumably that's bad planning. However, the zoning bylaw as of right in essence permits six meter wide lots and, and we comply with that. The objection to semis here, the zoning bylaw as well permits semi-detached dwellings. Uh, Mr. Kivy's concern about, again, the numerical value of the floor space index, I think, uh, with great respect to Mr. Kivy, he doesn't take into consideration looking at how that floor space is actually deployed on the site, the massing, the kinds of comments that I made, the uh, conclusions that Mr. Pfeffer came to in terms of the appropriateness of, of the design. And uh, lastly, a number of the residents have, have said these are not minor variances because either there's too many variances or um, they focused on the magnitude and the percentage difference. I think the committee knows that um, the Planning Act and the, the minor test is not a mathematical exercise. Uh, just looking at your agenda today, there are, if, if that were the uh, the filter, there are a number of applications that numerically have significant, quote, variances from, from the zoning bylaw. And lastly, on, on the FSI variances, and again, Mr. Kivy, that there are very few comparables within the immediate context at 22 Cuthbert, there was a variance approved for FSI of 0.758 and for number one Cuthbert, uh, 0.84. So again, variances in FSI are common in these types of areas and subject to the design of the buildings as Mr. Peffer has picked up on, um, those densities and variances can be compatible, can fit and um, are appropriate. I'll stop there and be happy to answer any questions. Okay, uh, Ms. Chan. Yes, um, I have a question. Actually, I'm, I'm more interested in the uh, transportation report, which uh, is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, which indicates that even if it's a, uh, the front yard parking, even if it's approved by uh, CFA, it, it doesn't mean that you, that, that you will get a permit because uh, it's, uh, if the last paragraph, for example, is uh, it, it's got a very good ex explanation, means that the any kind of bylaw passed by planning at will be overridden by the city of Toronto at that, that's why transportation is suggesting to refuse the fun yard parking variant. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll speak to that, and and frankly, we were blindsided by by this. Um, this this report came out the last day of the deadline for comments. Uh, two weeks prior to this, we had an October 14th email from Transportation who said they had no objections to the, the parking variance. Um, we haven't had time to, to work through how parking, if, if the front yard parking um, does not occur, how parking could occur. There are options for dealing with that uh, different from front yard parking but we simply haven't been able to work through what that might be and, and, and what that might look like. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it with committee to make a decision on the recommendation from, from transportation. Okay, well, I, that, that means it's actually what you, uh, uh, you have said is total in contradiction with the report though, right? The report saying that you will not, you're not, 
You're not eligible for a front, park, a front yard parking space. I'm not contradicting the report. I'm saying that if front yard parking pads are not created in some manner, that there are other options for providing parking that don't involve a front yard parking pad. And that would require um, a, a different kind of a design. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hayes. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rendell, um, can you go over again uh, submissions with respect to uh, the height and the front and uh, rear wall heights? I do appreciate the, you know, the step backs um, at the rear, but I'd like to hear um, some submissions with respect to those two or a summary of that again, please. Yeah, again, on, on the elevation, I mean, there's there's a variance for the, the building height. It's a flat roof building with a height of 10.87 meters measured to the highest point of the building. And then with that height, again, you would have a variance on the main wall heights, the front and rear walls, which... Um, the zoning bylaws, it's a maximum of seven meters. And because we have a three-story flat roof house with a height of 10.87 meters, the front and rear walls have a 10.06 meter height commensurate with the height of the building. No, I, I understand the why. I, 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 I want to understand your submissions with respect to why you believe um, those two variances are appropriate and minor and meet the tests yeah. well well they, they meet the test because three-story dwellings are permitted in this neighborhood in some neighborhoods you have both a max maximum height as well as a limitation on the number of stories uh they'll limit it to two stories for example um and in in this situation here again related to the design to create the three stories, you end up at a 10.87 meter height of this, which in my view, while it's greater than nine meters, variances to maximum building height, again, are common and frequently required by new development in these neighborhoods. Um, if staff can just scroll down to the last plan that I started out with, which shows you the 3D context. This shows the fit to the adjacent houses and the house to the north is a two-story flat roof house. And as we heard, the house to the south, and I think graphically this shows the height relationship is a three-story house. And I heard it has living space on the third floor. It is a sloped roof house. But in terms of, and I again, I think this shows it, um, the, the massing and the height certainly between uh, the buildings to the south and the proposed semis here. Different type of design, different roof styles, but uh, very similar in terms of height, massing, orientation on the lots. I think they fit. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions, panel members? Okay, let's take it into committee then. Chair, if I might, just yeah, a question. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Thanks. Do you have a question? Okay, we're yeah. on committee again. Please, p pardon me. Oh. Uh, just to the applicant, can you talk about the front yard uh, landscape open space? You're quite deficient on that, and I'm wondering why, um, why that is so low and... Um, why you haven't shown other mitigating features, maybe like porous, uh, porous pavers? Well, the, the, the design of the front yard, there's a number of considerations that went into that, but it basically starts from if once you put down the front yard parking pad, which even with, pa with uh, permeable pavers doesn't count as landscaping, doesn't count as soft landscaping, then you need to provide walkways, which aren't so soft landscaping. We have bicycle parking spaces here as well, as well as um, an area there where you store your recycling and other bins. 
it's a matter of quite simply fitting all of that within the front yard space and um, these are the relationships that, that, that you end up with okay any other questions okay seeing none let's take it into committee again Ms. Chan I'd like to start with um, the front yard parking first. I, I, I think I almost think that maybe it's, maybe they need a deferral in terms of um, getting clear whether those parking uh, spaces are actually allowed to have. Because if that's changed, the front yard uh, lands, uh, soft landscaping we might give them uh, another, you know, uh, a chance to redesign it. I, because the transportation report is very, very clear that they asked us to refuse the front yard parking. That, that's my problem. Uh, I'm not too sure whether it's the same problem for everybody. Anyone else? I'll jump in. I I don't fully understand the transportation uh, report, to be honest, um, with the City of Toronto Act versus the zoning. And this is the first time I've come up against this, and I'm I'm not sure. I'm I'm personally don't have issues with the with the severance and with the built form of the proposal. I think that it does represent a bit of an evolution of change in the neighborhood, and I think it's I think it's sensitive. Um, but I I do have issues with uh, particularly with the front yard parking and um, and the front yard uh, soft landscaping. Mr. Clay. Yeah. I, first of all, I wanted to thank everyone who uh, called in and shared their thoughts. And uh, from the Ratepayers Association, so a great deal of research and work went into. Uh, the analysis that uh, was presented to us today. Um, I am, however, um, convinced by the applicant that uh, this um, proposal is 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 fairly subtle given um, the circumstances in the lot fabric and there are other uh, equally high uh, dwellings in and around the area. Uh, I agree with Peter. This is not surprising. You do have a, a slightly oversized lot. It's not uh, uh, unusual in almost every neighborhood now that we're seeing these kinds of proposals for severances and putting um, uh, semis in uh, instead. It is a, a good way of introducing additional density into existing established neighborhoods. Um, so, uh, and I thought a lot of the mitigating design features about massing, pushing the massing on the third floor back, both in the front and the rear, uh, was trying to be sympathetic to uh, concerns of the uh, surrounding neighbors. Um, I'm not as fussed about the front yard parking in the sense that uh, I'm satisfied that if we're getting a recommendation to refuse because uh, is in is not allowed in this neighborhood, even though it would appear there are many existing front yard parking pads already, but I presume they were done previously and are now grandfathered. Um, I, I would uh, suggest if that's refusing, if we refuse the parking, uh, an alternative will have to be found. It might even be street parking, but that might address the front yard landscaping deficit as well. So I'm kind of comfortable uh, with uh, transportation's recommendations, if we saw fit to uh, approve this application, um, but I again, I I, I I I empathize with the neighbors, but this is um, in all things that we see across the city and what we see in other neighborhoods. This is not, frankly, uh, um, dramatically different from what we're seeing uh, as the evolution of neighborhoods and changes introduced. Um, in other areas as well. So I'm I'm not uncomfortable with this application. 
Oh, Larry, can I can I ask a question to Larry? Uh, so you you say that you will adopt the uh, transportation report, then the, uh, automatically then the Spanya uh, landscaping will be improved, right? But how do you tie that to our decision? Uh, well, you might refuse the front yard landscaping variance as well. Yeah, that's what I, I, I'm thinking. That's what, yeah. Ms. Hayes, you I, had your hand up also. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, like, you know, the front yard landscaping might be deficient even without the front yard parking, so we can't know that. So I think that if we were to accept the transportation um, recommendation, uh, we would have to uh, refuse the front yard parking and if they end up with street parking and they're still deficient on front yard landscaping with the proposal they'd have to make an application for another variance but I, I to 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 deal with front yard landscaping from a, a vision of that there's a parking pad there and we're saying we're not going to grant that variance I don't think I'd be comfortable granting a variance for front yard landscaping, not knowing what my, it might be about. And then they yeah, have permissions, I, even if they didn't want to do that. Yeah, uh, can I suggest something? What about to restore the parking pad to, uh, to soft landscaping? Then we will, uh, it's As a like, condition, you mean? As a condition, yeah. Just to restore you the- You mean areas. what's shown on the site plan? As uh, the, the parking pad, yes. So basically, I think what Yim's saying is refuse, like refuse the the parking spaces for both of the variance applications, and then add a condition that it has to be restored to soft landscaping, but it still wouldn't give you the number for the um, front yard softscape. But but to mm -hmm. Yim's point, could you make a condition further to what she said, and that the condition be and whatever resulting number be that the variance resulting to front yard landscaping be adjusted upward accordingly. I don't know if we can do uh, that. I don't know, Sabrina, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think staff are gonna like that one. I don't think so either. <laughs> I'll write a book, yeah. <laughs> Through you, Madam Chair, no, I would not. I would not encourage that. <clears throat> but I'm oh, well. sorry. It was I'm just, we were, Yim was trying to be creative. <laughs> No, no, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm quite satisfied because I think transportation sometimes has this condition too. Is you, you remove a parking pad, you just restore the um, area into soft landscaping. Right. You, were t you were trying to solve an issue. Okay, um, so where do we want to go with this then? We'll need a motion of some kind. I thought Larry is going to make one. I don't know, oh, Lair, you're on the hook. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I think this might be a community uh, um, condition, or sorry, a uh, um, motion. Okay, so uh, I think we're all agreed that, um, that we're gonna support this application. Um, there are a number of uh, conditions that we need to consider. There are the standard engineering conditions, there is forestry uh, number th three. Uh, three and yeah, on, on parts two and one. And oh. number one as well, no? Yeah, it's on both of the severances, forestry okay. number three. And then also just before you go any further, uh, it's also the application as amended with variance number six deleted for um, both variant for both severance applications. Right, the rear yard landscaping. Yeah, so that's that's gone on both, and then okay, continue. Uh, so and just in, in that respect, we're refusing uh, variance number seven. Uh, yep. Uh, and there is a heritage condition with respect to archaeology as well. Yeah, that's the August twenty fifth report. Okay, so and then and, uh, I think Yim, you were suggesting that um, that the front yard parking pads be restored to soft landscaping. I think so. Otherwise, it will be paved, right? It, they will just build according to the site plan. Yep. So, do we not have to refuse the um, like variance number five then? I think we have to refuse number five. I agree. I'm, yeah, I think I'm that was our thought. Refusing five. 
Sorry, Peter? Yeah, I agree. I'm good with refusing five. Yeah. I think they'll be able to figure out a 25%. Um, yeah, I, I, so. I, I, yeah, I think that's where we started. So yeah, okay. So we'll refuse five and seven. Um, six is deleted. And uh, the conditions as we've uh, laid them out. So sorry okay. through you, Madam Chair, just for some clarity. Yep. Variances number uh, five and seven will be refused for both minor variance applications. Yes. Variance number six is removed for both var uh, minor variance applications. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, standard consent conditions as well mm -hmm. as the conditions imposed by engineering construction services. Mm -hmm. Urban forestry has uh, number three for the consent application Correct. and condition number one for both minor variance applications. Heritage Preservation Services has four conditions that will be tied to the consent application and then the minor variance applications will also include the condition related to front yard being or the front yard parking pad being restored to front yard landscaping. Soft or, landscaping. Soft landscaping, yes. yes. Soft landscaping. Um, okay. done. Nicely done, Sabrina. Thank you. Um, hold on one second. So I'm sorry, Sabrina, just to go back to the forestry. I, I don't know if I misunderstood you. Did you say there's also condition number one? I so only see forestry three. has condition number three for yep. the consent application, the B file. And yep. then for the two minor variance files, uh, forestry is imposing condition number one for both part one and part two. That's right. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I see it. I was just looking at it as one line. So, okay. Great. I'll so, who that. wants to second that motion? I will second that. Okay, so the motion then with everything we just reviewed is moved by Mr. Clay, seconded by Ms. Chan. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Through you, Madam Chair, we can go back to item number 40. Um, okay, give me one second, please. And, sure. Yeah. And we I just should have need... Ida back on the line. Yeah. Okay, just give me one second. Okay. okay. Um... Oh, wait, oh. sorry. Is she not on the line? Because, uh, you know what, can can we, Mr. Rendell has the next application and he's still probably on the line. So maybe we can just go with that one for now. Okay, we do have Ida now on the line. Do you, you do? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, let's go back then. No, okay. Ida, 40. Hi, Ida. What did you find out? Oh, hi. Sorry, I was just going to say, if you wanted to take that other one, that would have been fine. Um, I did find out that <clears throat> there, um, there is no, for our zone, um, there is no building length provision. It's only depth. Okay. And, Thank you to Member Hayes because it's the first time I felt my heart jump in a long time. So you woke me up. <laughs> she does that to us too. <laughs> I didn't mean to make you panic. It's just it's usually, talent. usually one goes with the other. So were yeah. there any other questions on on uh, on item forty uh, one hundred eight Heath West? No. Okay. Um, all right, let's take it into committee then. Joanne, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Uh, with that clarification, I think what's being proposed um, is appropriate. There's no lot area, lot area variances. The frontages, I think we've you know, been shown that um, they're, they're not under unrepresented. I think what's being proposed is a smart design and I can support the application. And if my colleagues have no further comment, I'd move a motion or motion. Yes, go ahead. So I'm gonna move a motion to approve the severance application subject to development engineering conditions and the standard consent conditions and uh, subject to four and approve both variance applications 
subject to forestry condition number one on both the variance applications. Okay. Um, sorry, bear with me one second. I think I wrote something down wrong here on my notes. 108 Heath. Yeah, I have forestry number three. Number three, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I? I'm yeah, looking, I was yeah. just double checking because I've made a couple of mistakes too, but I, I just, I'm looking at the report. It is three. Yes. Okay. Three, oh, I'm number sure three. It is, it is number, number three. three. And it would be subject to the consent application. Okay. Okay. Well, then, um, okay. Yeah. So are you seconding this, Chen? Okay. So engineering conditions um, on the severances, standard consent, forestry number three on both severances. Moved by Ms. Hayes, seconded by Ms. Chen. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Okay. Um, 43, 69, Elderwood. Um, we have before us a copy of the minutes from the August 10th public hearing, as well as the materials submitted at that time a copy of the plan of survey, revised site plan, floor plans and elevations, correspondence from the agent. And we have a tree protection plan prepared by Green Y Landscape Inc. I am only showing the agent as a speaker. Uh, do we have uh, do we have Mr. Rendell with us still? Yes, I'm still here, ma'am. Okay. Um, panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. Rendell? Mr. Clay? Yeah, this was, I, I think I was on this panel uh, when it was before us before, and the issue was the side yard setback, and um, there was a concern from the adjacent neighbor that it was too close, but there was an ability to shift the building over to the other side of the lot. It, it, I'm just confirming that's what you've done. Yes, Mr. Clay, thank you. You're You've given my presentation. Uh, you were on the panel the last time that this was dealt with, and the panel was inclined to approve the application, but in response to the concerns about the neighbor to the east where the side yard variance was originally proposed, the committee um, suggested that we do what we have done, but staff advised that that amendment the committee couldn't do back in August because there would, in, in staff size, new notice had to be given. So that's why we're back here now. But um, yeah, it was favor. I can say it was favor really received by the committee the last time with the amendment that I've just described and you've described. Yeah, thanks. Okay, um, and I also also I believe the. Um, like the permeable pavers, which are now showing on the site plan was also raised at that time. Right. All right, any other questions, panel members? Seeing none, well, let's take it into committee for a decision. Mr. Clay. Sure, I'll move this one since uh, I started. Uh, anyways, yeah, this, I think uh, this is exactly what we had, the committee had hoped for uh, has happened. I think the neighbor is obviously satisfied it makes sense to configure the building uh, the way it is now. Uh, I'd like to move approval of this application. There are no conditions. The, pa the pavers are already in the plan, so I think we're good. All right, do I have a seconder? Mr. Reed, so motion to approve, moved by Mr. Clay, seconded by Mr. Reed. All in favor? That carries unanimously. And our final item today is 208 Bellwoods Avenue. We have before us a copy of the minutes from the August 17th public hearing, as well as materials submitted at that time, copy of the plan of survey, revised site plan, floor plans and elevations, a covering letter from the agent. We have a staff report in our supplemental agenda from planning asking for conditions and correspondence in support from number 206, which is adjacent. Uh, do I have the agent on the line? Yes, Madam Chair, you do. This is uh, Timur Balba, architect, <clears throat> excuse me, architect and agent uh, for the owner. Are you aware of the planning report, sir? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, uh, we're more than aware um, as part of the documentation you have before you, uh, members of the committee as well. 
Uh, you see our acknowledgement uh, and support of the recommendations put forward by community planning staff. Um, and um, we have we have responded and in fact um, updated the drawings, which you also have before you, to reflect uh, a reduction in the height requested. Yeah, I did have one question about that. You're reducing to 10.8 meters, correct? Right. So yes, correct, I, need, I need you to officially then amend variance number three because the notice is still showing 11 meters. Is that? Uh, Madam Chair, we, we were in uh, close communication with, with planning staff uh, who told us that the updated drawings would suffice to have this uh, change reflected. That, the, that, no, we're good with the drawings, but this is the notice that the committee has before us. So I just need you to officially amend the variance if the draw, like to, to reflect the drawings that we, we do have. And and by amending, do you mean a, a verbal statement at this, yeah, this yeah, current moment? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Then, then I, I, like, we can't do it. I understand. We have to I understand. Do it. Okay. Then in that case, yes, as agent uh, of the owner, we, we are officially requesting an amendment to that variance uh, so that the altered dwelling height will be 10.8 meters. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Panel members, do you have any, any questions for the agent? Okay. Um, so... We're ready to take it into committee, Mr. Valba. Um, anything you want to add before we go into committee? Um, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And I'll just be extremely brief here. Uh, and I just wanted to thank the committee members for their uh, consideration and, and patience today. Uh, we're just proposing what we feel is a very are very modest increases to height and FSI through a sensitive and well-considered design to accommodate a growing family as well as to create some significant improvements to a secondary basement suite. So four of the six variances before you are related to new walkout stairs proposed in the front yard to the basement suite, which we feel creates a proper separation between the primary residence and the secondary suite, while creating a, a, more, um, a much more improved two-bedroom layout for this more affordable basement unit. Um, again, I would uh, refer to the staff report dated October 26 to show our uh, collaborative discussions uh, with community planning to address the only two concerns, uh, which were that of height and again, uh, planters along the new walkout stairs to this basement suite, which again uh, triggers the four of the six variances. Uh, city staff feel that that can be properly mitigated through uh, planter strategy, which we also agree with. Um, I, I leave the decision in the committee's hands and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Um, let's take it into committee panel members. Ms. Chan. Are you, I, I would like to have a motion for approval because I think the proposal, this type of proposal is very common in the area. Uh, adding a secondary street and have walk out to the, uh, to the basement. So I have no problem with the other variances, and I would like to move for approval with, with uh, subject uh, as, as as amended, and also subject to the staff report. Two conditions in the staff report. Okay. Um. So motion is moved by Miss Hayes, or I'm sorry, by Miss Chan, seconded by Miss Hayes, to approve the application as amended with variance number three, uh, now reading ten point eight meters and the conditions in the planning report dated October 26th. All in favor? That carries unanimously and our meeting stands uh, adjourned, concludes at 638. Thank and you so thanks, much. Thanks everybody. Thanks all of Jacob, Sabrina, I don't know who else was uh, involved. Yeah. Thanks everybody. I keep calling you. Yeah, I know, I keep a, calling. I had to read break. down during this time of year and turn on lights in each of our rooms because we're all now sitting in shadows. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, Nancy. Uh, thank you, members. Have a good Thanks, day. Everyone. everybody. Thanks, Sabrina. Not a problem. Well done, Nancy. You you made it through uh, uh, <laughs> not feeling well, but you, you were very stoic. Yes. Yeah, well, I asked Sabrina. I, I was uh, not happy this morning when I had no internet as soon as I got you know, start, that was the start so anyway it worked out okay and thank you guys for your great input as always Have and you. Sabrina thanks for you know fixing up our conditions when we're kind of muddling along of course anytime. <laughs> couldn't do it without you Sabrina <laughs>
have a good evening, <laughs> and, everyone. And your, and your team, everybody's yes, been yes, good. Yeah, well. for sure. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thank guys. Have a good Bye. night. Bye.